I just woke Hello. up. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, just woke up. Uh, so it's weird watching the delay. You shouldn't watch yourself on camera. It's, it's just a delay all the time. Ooh, yeah. <clears throat> I have to apologize. Marty's sitting. Well, over if, there. If technically, they, if they've watched any uh, previous episodes, they know that we're in a. Weird configuration. Yeah, we're in a very tiny room, <laughs> and we're two and we're two sizable kind of guys. So yeah. it uh, that's our biggest problem. We uh, yes, he's six four, six five, six five. Sorry, <laughs> I won't skimp on the weight then. Three hundred eighty pounds. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> about maybe, about three ten. About three <laughs> ten. And I'm about three, three hundred with a, and me, yeah, about three hundred at six one. Mm -hmm. So we're we take up some room. <laughs> yeah, but you got some really nice chairs in here, though. That's yeah, not mean, bad. These are comfortable. Yeah. Well, you know what though? I bought this chair new, thinking so I bought it to support my back, mm -hmm. and it kind of does that. When I, I, I sat in it at Sam's Club, and the interesting was, I asked Laura, I was like, is this chair, like, leaning to the left? It must be broken. She's like, no. Like, what, it has to be broken because my lower left side of my back is actually touching the chair's back. That's how kind of crooked my back yeah, is down there, my hips. So. And it was like, it, it felt like my body was falling out of the left hand side of the bottom part of the chair Jesus. and I was like I was like so maybe that's a good thing I should buy this maybe to help fix some of that those problems and then but I get it and I come home and then my feet just swell up when I sit in it and that's that didn't help I still don't think you should play in the chair <laughs> <laughs> well but I mean they swell up and they hurt and I tried putting these pads underneath there to to make it so it's not so far of a. It's it's definitely not fall. the chair. It's, yeah, it's your back. It's my back. Yes. That's cutting off the nerve. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. So. It has kind of made it not like in the back of my head. I don't want to come up and draw sometimes because I know my feet are just gonna swell up and hurt. But. Yeah. I tried doing that with that chair a long time ago. That's why I bought that for. This chair is nice. But then my feet swell up and hurting it too. Yep. Once again, not the chair's fault. Yeah. Yep. It is. Just like me, uh, you're in the same boat. Um, I mean, you're obviously in a worse boat because your back's all fucked up. <laughs> um, me, I just need to uh, lose weight. It's funny. Because if I get down to where I'm supposed to be, like if I was down to like 250, that would be where I was like, like cut and zero percent body fat and all that kind of crap. Because you know I've, I've got a lot of muscle uh, already that I've built uh, over the years. But um, it's funny to me is uh, I used to have muscle. <laughs> it's still there. It's just underneath all that. Not really. <laughs> but um, you know, uh, it's funny even when I was down to like really low body fat um nobody has ever called me skinny <laughs> yeah that's true nobody's ever called me skinny even when i was you know, under you know, 200 was pounds big. yeah i've never been it's just like skinny. you know like uh dwayne the rock johnson or any of those uh wwe stars nobody ever calls those guys skinny yeah and Truthfully, they'll probably be skinniest people you'll ever find. <coughs> That's true. <laughs> That's Cause, true. Because if skinny is a matter of being your waist lower size. lower body percentage of, of fat, then then yeah, those right. are, those guys are it. But when you, <coughs> you have a guy that big and you can and you start seeing the definition and the six pack <coughs> and all that kind of stuff, that means they have very little body fat. That's true. But you know, like a What's his name? Gerard Butler. When he was doing um, uh, 300, you know, he's just got one of those. Just those. Butler. He's got one of those uh, bodies, you know, that uh, his stomach 
is huge because he's got big, huge muscles there. And um, yeah, nobody's ever going to call that guy skinny. Right. <laughs> it's the same with Tom Hardy. Nobody's going to call him skinny. Oh man, that movie Bronson that he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I that's want, a that's I, a great movie. What's the one with him, him playing the twins? The Craze. It was uh, the Craze Twins. It was. Yeah. That Legends? Was Legends, yeah. That Legends. Was I actually never saw that, but his movie, that movie Bronson, you know, this, this video is about your movies. <laughs> movies and our favorite uh, top five story movies. So, movies that dealt with story, then our top five uh, visual. Because right. that was our, uh, that was was our, our idea was. Visual based movies versus story based movies because uh, last podcast, which was what two, two, three weeks three ago, weeks ago yeah. um, was uh, we had actually said during that um, that uh, you know there are movies that I like that are just visually spectacular you know because I made the comparison of that the uh, Shattered Time graphic novel was kind of like a Michael Bay film where it just gets into the pow, 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 pow. right. And uh, the original four novel series was more like a, you know, just a, a great story, you know, a saga. But anyway, I think they're both great stories. <laughs> but I wonder why. I don't know. Because <laughs> you know they're still a work in progress. Because your, your ego told you there, they were. There's so many things. That, there's so many things that we can add to it. You know. There so are. many things that have been added to it. So there's a new video game out. This uh, the G Ghost of uh, why I always get his name wrong. Toshigo Toshi. That uh, Japanese samurai one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, Jack Frags. That's another YouTube guy that I like to watch. He does a uh, mostly first-person shooter games, but he does a lot of reviews of video games. I like him because he has a British accent, and I think it's cool sounding. Hi, Jack. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, he likes them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Jack Frags did a, uh, 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 um, a review of, review of it, <clears throat> and yeah, it looks beautiful. I I, I don't know why I I keep on in the back of my head because I watch this guy named Randall Carlson every now and then. Uh, I, I watched one or I listened to a podcast uh, literally two days ago of his. So on the podcast thumbnail, I think for that one, they showed a, a picture, I think it was of Tungusta, mm -hmm. the place in a, mm -hmm. of how the forest has grown back around it now, mm -hmm. but the, the actual crash site mm -hmm. is uh, still a prairie. Right. You know? And so I, keep, I can't, I, the ghost of Tungusta, that's all I can think of. Oh yeah. Uh, but I think it's to, to sheep. Well, just something like that, but I can cheat. <coughs> <laughs> but I've been watching gameplay of that, and it yeah. just makes me want to do more. Uh, well, we don't have in Shattered Time. There's a character who is a samurai. Yep. And Mariah, and it just makes me want to do more, more of his stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the way everything is. Is, is um, you know, you'll hear some news story and that as soon as I hear about some news story I go oh man I, w I want to work on a, a town called Li Liberty you know right you know, it, it, it's, it's um, you know it's funny how all this I don't know if it's funny but yeah it's, it's weird how you know what was really weird about my list was I don't know about steered all over the place I don't know about you when you started making it I started writing down my favorite movies and things and what tended to happen is how much the visual and the story started overlapping. And then I started to think about, well... Ghost of Tsushima. Tsushima. Yeah, there yeah. you go. That's, uh, that's Jack Frag's... They should have called it... Trying to get ripped Oops. this summer. <laughs> ah, they should have called it Ghost of Kojima. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, and about how, how horrible Death Stranding came out but, and the fact that they're I can't believe they're going to make another Metal Gear Solid without Kojima that's well, going to suck so bad 
what's funny is, is um, uh, if you can tell, I, we're not going to be able to stay on, on subject. Oh, no. easy. It, it, it doesn't <laughs> matter. I mean, uh, hopefully you guys are here just to hear us talk. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, I, I never really played much of Metal Gear st stuff, but, um, you know, I didn't really buy an Xbox until my kids got of age. Right. And, um, you know, now I uh, always raid the uh, um, the used game section or whatever at Walmart or the cheap game section. And um, and uh, I'll find different games, you know, that oh, I've never played. They're brand new to me, but, you know, and that's why I, I fell in love with the Fallout series because I played Fallout 3 oh, wow. and I played Fallout New Vegas. Close. And, um, and that, those, those games, you know, in my opinion still, because I love stories. Right. Fallout was great, and then they screwed it up and did Fallout 76 or whatever, that online, uh, thing. And, uh, you know, there's no story, um, you know, which sucks, because that's what I liked about Fallout. But anyway, um, uh, so I was trying to get into the Metal Gear thing, and I think I picked the wrong game, because <laughs> I saw it at the cheap game section. It was uh, Metal Gear Survival. Survival, yeah. It's not Metal Gear. Oh my God, it was horrible. Yeah, it's not really Metal Gear. It's just kind of like <laughs> it was really. It's like horrible. supplemental. You it know, was a, it's kind of an open world, but at the same time, it's not really an open world. And yeah, you're running around yeah. trying to basically get out of where you're at from. It's a, you know an escape game. You're yeah, trying to escape no. From. You, it sucked. For your Xbox, I think they did like a, like a, you can get like one, two, three, and four, I think, all in one game now. Like, I haven't seen it. I don't know. But I would, I would start at three or four if you were just wanting to try it, you know? Yeah. Uh, five is a little con convoluted. But because you kind of have to almost have to play the other ones to understand what five was all about, right? Uh, you know, and, and they had they had they had great fun with that game. Like in the first one, uh, you have to beat this guy called Psychomantis, mm -hmm. which he's a he has psychic powers, and so when you go to shoot him, he moves because he can read your mind so he knows when you're going to shoot him what. Right. and so the way the only way to beat him is you got to take your controller out of port one and put it in port two because now you're a different player and he can't read your mind as right <laughs> that's the stupidest thing i've ever heard it's crazy right <laughs> right right so and then wow. so then in later down the line in three i think it was they brought back another character like that. It wasn't psychic, but it was another psychic person. And you go to do it, and you're like, oh, oh you're supposed to, you know. Switch. So people, but they messed with you. You didn't have to. But it was like, it was just funny. They, they like, unlike that one, you don't have to. You know, but it was like, huh. it was funny. That they, they got people to try to, to do that. Well, it's. I mean, I don't even know how you would do that now. I mean, all yeah, you can't do it now with the well. Wire, wire you, you'd have to disconnect, and then right. you connect the user two with the second controller. I only know that now because I I don't have a second controller. But just this last weekend, my nephew came and stayed with us, and then he brought his friend over on Sunday, and they played game all day, and he brought his other controller, and to watch him hook that one up to the PlayStation and get it up and running so they could play co-op was just like. <sighs> wow, that's annoying. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we were playing Call of Duty Warzone for a while. Yeah, that's a that seems to be the big thing. You know, like I was saying, uh, Jack Frags. That's what he's mainly doing. Now. Although I was playing, so I was looking at the demo section because I wanted something new to just try. Mm -hmm. And in there, in the free games, it said. Warzone, like free. Mm -hmm. What the heck? I thought maybe it was like a free beta. No. For but no, it was the camp. The the multiplayer was free. Right. And so I downloaded the multiplayer and I was playing on what they called a rumble, which is the 50-50 mm -hmm. on either side. You know, just 
die spawn die spawn die spawn die spawn I tried the other stuff I can't stand the looting stuff where you have to go down right. run around find some stuff right. find new guns yeah. find armor find bullets you come right. around the corner get clipped and you're like what the? I just spent five effing minutes <laughs> collecting all this shit I and then I get clipped and then I have to go to some prison Right, would you log, yeah. And then you have to try to find, and I get, I can't get, and then I just have to spectate. Yeah. F this is the worst gameplay ever invented. Ever, ever, ever invented. Yeah, that's one of the things that's a uh, uh, problem when you watch people like Jack Frags or any of these professional gamers, basically. They make it look so damn easy. Well, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not a pro. Granted, they go but, to the gulag every once in a while, but they always win. But I'm not a, I'm, I, I can play competitively. Right. I can play middle. I'm always a good middle support. Mm -hmm. Like, like. Oh, well, that's the thing. But, but that just is un. And, and and then you start learning about how people have controllers that help aim. Oh yeah, aim bots and stuff. Not like just aim bots. Their controller actually helps track or put the rec the sight mm -hmm. right in the middle of the screen right at head height so all you have to do is make sure that you get the person in that area of the screen and then you can pull the trigger right. and you know and, and you're playing against that stuff and it's like you know no I'm not gonna you, they do that and then I have to go over, out to that and then spectate for an hour no that's just the stupidest right. thing I think just let me spawn die spawn die spawn die I think you know the the I think what would be the funnest play, and it's what Fra Frags tries to do. I mean, he does solo games also, but the most fun ones to watch um, of his channel is he has these two. He has he always plays squads where it's the four people. Right. And um, he has his, squads. His, his, that was great. His squads uh, has a. He always chooses the same guys. There's a guy named Stottlemyre, and then there's a. Um, one of the most entertaining groups he has is he has these two Scottish guys that come on there, and they're they're not very good, but they're fun to listen to. Right. And um, <clears throat> yeah, um, you know, you can last a little bit longer because hopefully your squad mates can uh, keep well, you alive. Yeah, I did that. I, I, I did the squad, right? I did I, I did the squad, and as so I'm looking, I'm saying, okay, there's our different colored triangles. Mm -hmm. We're in the airplane. What? Two of them just jumped up. Right. What me? What, what were we supposed? To, okay, so I jumped out. One guy stayed in the plane, kept going, and so I followed the other guys down. Mm -hmm. Followed them down to the top of this building. They were in, they were getting shot at by some guys, and but one of them made it. I went to see him, and then he shot me. You're on squad, then? Yeah. <laughs> Now, I don't know. If, uh -huh. I don't know if he was actually, but he was. The color was right. As, as like, what the? What? The? <laughs> I I was upset because they took the rumble away. Right. So now it only is the looting. Now well, they added a new thing. They they have one that's called the juggernaut. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. That one's pretty cool. Go away. <laughs> you know, why get rid of the thing that was? populated by 104 players mm -hmm. and every server was populated mm -hmm. well we got to change it up keep people active and fresh um, people have been playing this game for 15 years now while they're adding uh, I don't think you need to refresh stuff as much as you think you need to refresh stuff right. all you got to do is make fun maps Right. Have good guns that work. That's that what feel doing. like they're good guns. That's what they're working on right now. Is um, they sent out a bunch of different um, these trophies. Basically, they're rooks, big rooks. I and mean, they sent three of them out. One to Jack Frags and, and one to two other uh, professional players. <coughs> and um, they had a it had a USB drive in there that um, it had played a short clip. And so uh, in the map there's a stadium that um, uh, 
has never been opened. It's just a big building that you know you can't get into. You can run around it basically. And that stadium, all the videos were taking place inside the stadium. So their guess is is that they're going to open up the stadium to where you can run around in it. Run around in it. I each other. I actually sometimes prefer the the more closed in arenas mm -hmm. where it's just chaotic and frantic and mm -hmm. and, that's what and, that would be. and you find a spot. Camp it? Yeah. So <laughs> are you a camper? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's funny. It's like half the time. That's all you really gotta have to do is just find your spots. Mm -hmm. So me and my nephew, we started. Uh, I I like to play on the PC. Well, yeah. I would I'm not a very that. good controller. Right, because the controller is slow. And so because of that, we started sniping, mm -hmm. and we started doing pretty good. And we built up the sniper rifle and. And we could get 10, 12 kills on a good round. Mm -hmm. So, you know, good middle of the road support. Uh, but it's all about finding their spots. You got to find those spots that you can actually do some damage at. Uh, you got to find a spot that you can do damage at where you're not going to constantly get ran over by the stupid cars. <laughs> and they oh my gosh, that has got to be the most annoying thing. Mm -hmm. Well, we're I was, I was in this one spot, this one map. It's called the park, mm -hmm. and I and everything comes to a head right at these uh, bathrooms mm -hmm. and portable, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's a fountain and these bathrooms, and everybody's on this side and that side. And, rah, rah, rah. and I found I was out on the side where I could pick people off on the behind the the porta potties. The porta potties, mm -hmm. and I saw this guy come run out, just about ready to pick him up. The big truck went. And this blood just was flick, you know, just splattered. And <laughs> me and my nephew just started cracking up. It was just a little, it looked way too hilariously real. Just block. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Let's see. How long have we been going for so far? <laughs> okay. 22 minutes. We haven't even, yeah, we haven't even touched done on one movie something. yet. Yeah, one. Well, we kind of talked about movies. Right. So my, my problem was is was trying to figure out my criteria. Is it just a great story that I saw once or twice? Or is it something that brought me back over and over again that I've watched several times? Like, my favorite movies, are they the ones that I always watch? Or is it just ones that were, that left good meaning to me? I didn't necessarily have to watch it again but I remember it a lot. And so that was one of my problems that I ran into. I started finding that it seems like, you know, there's, there's movies out there that I've watched that are really good stories, but I don't watch them ever again. And so was it really that good of a story? I mean, the, the movie was great. Like, um, well, I can't think of it. What was that? Uh, Who's in it? I think Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt was in it. He did it. Killing him softly. Yeah. Good movie. Some beautiful dialogue in those movies. Like most of Tarantino's movies, great dialogue. I don't know if I really like. I mean, The Hateful Eight. Great movie. Great movie. The dialogue's amazing. There's enough what the hell moments that happen in it. <laughs> uh, Plus, well, you had the great Kurt Russell. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and and he was great, but he wasn't. He wasn't the, best the part. No, no, he wasn't a star. That I mean, no. the girl was that one girl with all those guys. Yeah, she won the she won an Academy Award it, for it. her. Her performance was amazing, mm -hmm. and even when old Tatum showed up, you thought <laughs> that might get a little goofy, but he was great, and and the whole thing is just brilliant and but it's not on my list <laughs> you know uh, uh, what's the other Tarantino movie everybody loves uh, Pulp Fiction is Pulp Fiction you know probably that, his most famous that probably should be on my list too but but it's not you know I mean I, that's the problem I keep thinking about stuff like that it's like should should I really put those on the list instead of what I have because 
what I have aren't as dialogue thick. They're not as well. They're not as story. It makes you wonder. <laughs> um, if you have to uh, analyze what makes a story great. Because it can be a simplistic story, but what to me makes a story great is you're pulling the reader or watcher along and they don't want to stop looking. Right. So there's definitely tons of movies that I will watch when I come into the middle of it, beginning of it, end of it, mm-hmm. just to finish it off, you know. Like, or I, I watch it just to get to that one part. Mm-hmm. Uh a good example of that, and this is gonna sound, is uh, uh, you've got mail. It's worth watching all the way to the part till you get Tom Hanks saying, uh, "It takes a little tweaking." He's, you know, he's he's in this, he he's got to tweak uh, his relationship with the girl right now because it's, mm-hmm. you know, it, the whole thing's up to. I just like I like that line. I like how it works. It's like, uh, so. Yeah, I, I, I had a tough time with it more than I thought I was going to. I thought it was going to be easy. And then I thought, oh, story and visual stuff, that's going to be easy to separate because... But because of how my criteria were starting to work out was, oh, those are starting to be the same movies. Okay, well, um, you got my interest peaked here. Uh, why don't you just start on your list so I can... So, so I'm gonna cheat with with one of them. <laughs> so I, I didn't put them in any specific order, no order. But I'm gonna cheat with my first one. And I'm gonna put two movies in the one, and that's only because uh, I needed the room. But, <laughs> but they're kind of like the same thing, and I often put them together, thinking that this one was that one and that one was this one. You know what I mean? And they're two Robin Williams movies. And it's, called Being Human and What Dreams May Come. Uh, I've seen What Dreams May Come. I don't know if I've seen Being Human. So Being Human is a little little film that he did, and it's quite fascinating. He takes, uh, he plays this pretty much the same character. He's a father mm-hmm. and pretty much a, just a dad. Mm-hmm. And he's a dad in prehistoric times, He's a dad, and I think during the French Revolution, maybe it's only three instances of time. I thought it was like a few more, but maybe it's only three. And then modern day, and how, you know, well, times have changed, so everything's different, right? Well, all he cared about in all three instances was making sure his kids had a safe place to sleep, were uh, away from predators and had food in their bellies yep. and the only thing that was different was how he had to go about doing it mm-hmm. and it it was fascinating that no matter uh, across the time that hasn't changed no. just how we go about doing it has changed and it was, it's, it's it's very good. My wife hates it. She says it's so boring. <laughs> but I think it's I think it's a very profound movie. Right. And then the other one with what, what dreams may come. You know that uh, what dreams may come. Sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead. What dreams may come is actually a part of a series. Is it? Yeah, because there's a um, there's three movies that were made by this one director, and it's all about the power of love. Because in What Dreams May Come, he actually goes to hell to get his, uh, uh, right. his uh, the love of his life back. And um, in the first one, it was a movie that was starring uh, Christopher Reeve, and it was about Christopher Reeve traveling through time to be with his love. Oh, okay, and yeah. Was, I can't remember the name of it right now, but... And then there's a third one, and I can't remember the name of that one either. I know which one you're talking about, Jim. It's um, with, with the penny. Mm-hmm. And... But that's uh, the same director, same storyline. But anyway, go ahead. What we'll dreams I come? Yeah, <laughs> that's fascinating. But uh, I, I love that. I think it's, I, I love the the idea that this guy, whoever wrote it, must have had an interesting relationship with his parents or something. I, I'd imagine because you you put so much of your life into your writing mm-hmm. and. 
you know, his his children died when they were when they were young. Uh, they were in a car accident, and that's what the whole movie's about. It's him and his wife dealing with their children's early death and how that ripped them apart. And she committed suicide, and mm-hmm. and then and then he's a doctor crashing in uh, one of the tunnels in New York City, mm-hmm. and he gets out of his car to go help, and another car crashes, flips up over the top, and crushes him. Yep. Poor guy. It's like, wow. But he wakes up in heaven. But he wakes up in the afterlife. Well, I don't know if he's in heaven yet, but he's in the afterlife. He's getting taken to heaven, but he gets woken up in the afterlife to, you know, a mist, to a voice, you know, and it's, it, they show this how to transition. You, they're transitioning him to the afterlife. And the first thing that he can actually see is his mentor from college uh, the guy who taught him about medicine and blah 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 and he's like oh and so happy to see him and blah 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 and then as he goes through the story as he's talking to that person he's starting to the, the person's talking about stuff that he did with him as a, as a kid you know like and, and he finally realizes it, it's his son. And when he asked the son, why didn't you come to me? He says, because I know that you would have rather seen him than me. <laughs> and it's just like this. Wow. Kind of, that's like, ouch type of moment, you know. And just and there's just this, this cascading of how maybe kids see their parents when their parents don't realize they're watching you know and I think it's a very profound little little movie that probably gets passed over and people really don't pick up on messages like that I I see things a little bit weirder and differently when it comes to that well it's fascinating I I see stuff like that and then I just had a conversation with my uh, nephew's friend and he was explaining to me the virtues of the uh, last three Star Wars movies and <laughs> don't even get me started on that shit <laughs> you know but I get I get where he's coming from with that now you know it's like okay I understand how you can actually like it I I think maybe my problems with it more were in the execution of the story than the actual story. Maybe uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought, but the idea that, you know, just how they executed some of the story stuff was just like, hurts, you know? Hurts my head. I, I, I tried watching Last Jedi again and just hurt, it hurt watching it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but listening to him explain why he likes it, it was like, okay, maybe, yeah, I can see that, yeah, okay. I guess I can I can let you have that. It's kind of like how uh, I hated modern art for so long, until I actually had a professor type explain a little bit about where the movement may have come out of, and it's like, okay, okay, I get it. You know, for so long everybody was trying to capture realism. You know, when the camera came out, you could take a realistic, you know, image, right. and Eventually, painting actually got to the point where you could put a photograph and a painting next to each other and you couldn't tell the difference. Right. Uh, and so, we, they, had, they had captured realism. They had gotten to the point where the pinnacle was done and you got into the early 30s and 40s when people really started experimenting with, with uh, heroin and acid and stuff like that rec- recreationally. Mm-hmm. And people started deciding, can I paint what I'm seeing in my head when I'm on a trip? Modern art. And I was like, oh, that explains a lot. (laughs) That explains a lot why a lot of it's so wild and out there. And I can't really understand it. Do I still like it? Most of it, no. Do I, can I understand it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it now. So, 
you know, and you can see that we're getting back into more realism. And, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I understand it, and and it was a great way for a lot of artists who could never reach realism to go. But at least I could do that. <laughs> I can paint little triangles. I paint them three different colors. But yeah. So, uh, I the the two of them though, I think they're just like they're they're profound human experience stories to me. Mm -hmm. That I I think about them a lot actually. I think I think it's very fascinating. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, number two. Oh, you want or should, just we, or should we go back and forth as far as? Sure, why don't you do one? Because <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I, I uh, like I said, um, you know, to me, a great story is something that you know pulls the reader, or the viewer in, and, and keeps them going. Um, but uh, you know, as far as great stories, you know, stories that you know have a message and all that kind of stuff. Um, <coughs> I also like. Part of my criteria is I like a movie that will take you through every emotion, and you know that what dreams may come certainly qualifies. I didn't have that on my list though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't expect you. I, I'll, I'll be surprised if we have. Well, maybe we might have one or two. But I doubt it. Um, so, top favorite movies um, for me, um, all of the ones that I usually have on my list of just top favorite movies. You can't just also, put all of them Steven Seagal movies, okay? <laughs> they can't just all be Steven Seagal movies. <laughs> anyway, um, my, I guess I'll uh, choose one randomly here. Uh, um, uh, one of my favorite movies is uh, that, I, that I'll watch over and over again is V for Vendetta. V for Vendetta? That's very good. That was on the list of all, you know, I just made a huge list and then I started going, well, which one would I rather have, that one or this one? Right. Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, <coughs> Viva Vendetta, um, uh, it was comic book first, and, um, and I just love, you know, there's, there's a couple comic book movies that I put in on the list, um, that, uh, or I guess they're graphic novels, anyway, but, um, uh, but V for Vendetta, I keep that on the list versus the the other movie that I, I think has a great story, but they didn't pull it off too well in the movie. The graphic novel itself is fantastic, but when they translated to movie, it sucked. It was The Watcher. Oh, The Watcher. The Watcher. The Watchman. The Watchman. Yeah. I was right. Yeah, and um, The Watchman, great story. <laughs> But like I said, the movie kind of sucked. Yeah, although and, and that's another one that's worth watching just to get up to the end. Well, there's to me there's two great scenes in that movie. There's what the big blue penis. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty big though. The Rorschach was stole that movie. Right. And so his two lines, you know, at the end, just do it, just kill me, just right. get it over with. Uh, the greater good does not outweigh good, <laughs> and then, right. and then uh, you have to remember, I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. But um, you know that that movie, The Watchmen, um, or that story, uh, it's the reason I like <coughs> it so much is because it answers the question: Does the ends justify the means? Right. And that, the whole storyline is just about that. Right. And well, not in and just, I, you know, them. everybody puts themselves in those different characters, you know, and I identify most with Rorschach because, in my opinion, the ends do not justify the means, and that's what he was fighting against. Well, not just the end, do the ends justify the means, but do they justify the means for the greater good? can you get to the greater good by doing evil and he said no. no you can't make a positive or negative into a positive it doesn't work you can only do a positive a positive or negative a negative 
can result in a positive. Right. It's like it doesn't work that way. No, you, you just so a lot of things that are happening. You know, just the great for the greater good. You know, you see that in so many movies, and it's like. Uh, it just twists your stomach sometimes to listen to justifications for the greater good right. or the ends justify the means but yeah that's um, the V for Vendetta um, that movie uh, once again a great story it's uh, you know um, dystopian future also um, which I like dystopian future movies um, and yeah uh, it's about tyranny and what happens when the government is left unchecked. Right. And with... Uh, yeah, the government left unchecked, driven by an ideology. And that's what's fascinating, is that it's driven by an ideology, and although it has uh, religious iconography, nowhere in it does it really say that it's religious. I mean, it does say, well, no, 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 their, their thing is might is right, right? Right. That's their slogan. There's, it's not God is right, God is might. It's might is right. And <clears throat> and it's fascinating that, I mean, and he picked everything so perfectly, you know, in that. It's, it's, it's a very, it's a very good book. You'll probably get burned here soon. <laughs> well, that's just the funny thing is, is um, you know, all that stuff that uh, you know, he played that song as he's blowing up that one building at the very oh, beginning yeah. of the movie, and the government's immediate reaction was not, you know, to I mean, of course they were trying to find the guy, but their immediate reaction was to blackball, to put on the band list that song. That song, right? Never want to hear that again. All right. Yeah. It's like, you know, I mean, he could have picked any song. I mean, but it's just funny. And they all would have ended up the same way on the right. broadcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, uh, I guess, you know, like I said, so many of these movies were just movies that... Uh, well, uh, let's just let's just do this. So, a visual movie, I do like the story too, but visually. So, so much of my, our, uh, I love our cartoons. I'm gonna put Ghost in the Shell. The one with uh, the animated Ghost oh. in the Shell, uh, not the one with Scarlett Johansson. Either, even though that's a that's a decent portrayal. Well, it's uh, not even know. that. It well. You know, everybody, everybody crapped all over it because they basically made the uh, Asian character white. Right. <laughs> Which is fascinating now. We're in, like, get us uh, in trouble, but you know, <laughs> it was only it was only Americans that were upset about that. Yeah. Because. The Chinese audience actually wanted to see yeah, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. No, no, they actually wanted to see Scarlett Johansson. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why. <laughs> it, mm. pe so, you know, yes. if you watch Tim Pool, you hear him talking about the reason why uh, the Grand Master for uh, uh, Doctor Strange. Oh, yeah. was Tilda Swinson. Oh, you mean the... Yeah, the Ancient One? The Ancient One, yes. Yeah, so the Ancient One is a Tibetan monk, right? In, in, the, the, in the comic book. Yeah. Well, with tensions that China's going through with Tibet right now, if they wanted to show that movie in China, they told them they could not make that person Tibetan. So they changed it to an Irish woman, <laughs> and everybody blames them for whitewashing. Right. Yeah. So. Well, China, right. China has a thing for uh, banning all right. other things. But they also have a penchant for white women, big boobs. 
<laughs> and that's the reason why they wanted to see Scarlett Johansson in that role. But, you know, there's there's been so many different versions of Ghost in the Shell. They've done Ghost in the Shell, Ghost in the Shell Live, the Standalone Complex, and uh, the, st the new movie that they did, which they changed the character again. Uh, and then the last one, or the, and then the movie... Uh, with Scarlett Johansson, you know, the fascinating thing is, is with the whole idea is that she can don any skin she wants and become anybody she wants. So, and, and technically, if you're not officially telling the original story, that story can be told millions of different ways because she can pick any any skin, and it will probably somewhat skew the story so I when I went when I watched it from that filter it wasn't as bad uh, but, um, but if it was just going to be a faithful going, representation of the original anime going back to the original you, you know like you said uh, the movie you know you can throw that out the window because the anime was perfect the anime was perfect. Yeah, it, <laughs> I mean that that was a work of art. I mean, great story, deep story, deep story, and then visually fantastic. The 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 fact that they didn't have to do all the anime faces, ah, you know, and and it's just an actual. It's grown up from start to finish mm -hmm. oh man that the her little fight scene with the guy out in the little courtyard area that's all like little bit of water she's standing in she she does that backflip up punches him in the face and there's that roundhouse and they do a three shot Michael Bay roundhouse thing you know of her kicking in them through the middle of it and then mm -hmm. finishing it and her leg just slowly goes down uh, there's 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 few things that I think about like constant like not constantly but you know you just sitting there and all of a sudden you think of something you know, oh, yeah that's a great scene yeah. uh, there's so many that even even the shot where she's she's chasing the guy down the alley to get to that and we're going back and forth and then we go to her and then as we come to him as he emerges out of the alley we're, we're watching him from outside looking past him down the alley and then he flips his head around and we go straight to that shot and boom the city just explodes behind him and it's like I wish I was halfway that creative to do stuff uh, by far one of the best things I've ever seen. Uh, all the mechanics on it work. The cars are great. I mean, Bateau drives a Ford GT. Awesome. I mean, and and another little side movie they did, they did a, well, the, the second movie, Innocence, was pretty good. But I really liked the third one they did, uh, the standalone complex. I thought that was actually a very good little movie. That was another. That's another one that's more story driven than it is uh, visually, and I think that one is really good. Better than the second one, that's for sure. You got one? Cause that was a visual one. That was visual. <laughs> well, I didn't. I, I, I didn't know. I didn't. Know so did you do five? I just did. The, did you do ten movies all together, or did you just do five? I just did five. Oh, uh, but um, I mean, uh, I can I can think of visually appealing movies that have very little story. I don't know if we'll get through all ten, but <laughs> yeah, um, uh, you know, top of my list. Um, like I said, uh, um, movies that you know have a great story, etc. But um, uh, usually I put. Um, number one on my list uh, you know takes me through every emotion etc great story is uh, Braveheart mm. 
That wasn't on my list. That's one of my favorite. There's so many movies. It's funny because there's two there's two movies on my list that um, it's because Mel Gibson directed them, and Braveheart's one of them. <laughs> I, oh. think, I think Mel Gibson is a fantastic director. Apocalypto or uh, no, my next or one, my next one is Hacksaw Ridge. Oh, Hacksaw Ridge! Holy crap, that was good. Oh yeah, it, you know that was all right. True story. No, uh, I loved about it. it I also thought it was, it was all right. It was what was good. great is uh, I loved um, who he chose to play the drill sergeant. Um, He's a comedian. Uh, he, he usually does comedies. Uh, he did. Uh, he did dodgeball. What the hell's his name? Um, oh, Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. He plays the drill sergeant in mm-hmm. that movie, and he does a great job. Um, but yeah, it's uh, but um, Braveheart. Um, once again, great story. Um, loosely based on uh, true story. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's kind of hard to say what happened way back then. But yeah. Um, yeah, well, the day-to-day particulars. I mean, it had a... Uh, but he did get some of the good... It had visual appeal. Double-crossing cruelty that happened. Mm-hmm. I mean, that 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 battle... Uh, I think Hastings was the one that they actually got the freedom, wasn't it? Or was Hastings the one where he gets betrayed by Robert Bruce. I think that was the one where he got betrayed. I think, I think that, yeah. And, and it's fascinating how, man, that was cold and calculating. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, mean, I, I only know that because I decided to research my my name, you know. His, his <laughs> choice of actors, though, I mean, um, uh, the guy who played the king, mm. holy crap, that Long guy Shanks. Good. Yeah, that guy was such a great actor, and then the guy who played Robert the Bruce, exceptional actor. I mean, every character he had in there, he he chose really well. Even that creepy guy that tried to rape his wife, <laughs> that guy was great. <laughs> Is that the guy he, he takes the uh, hammer to? Um, he actually. Uh, or is that just later? Did they do that to? I think he. Um, I just remember he I takes a hammer to somebody. He, he, so it's it's the first time they ever saw in a movie. Because sometimes you you wonder about the effectiveness of, of a weapon like that on a battlefield, and you're like, but the idea of just crushing bones mm-hmm. beneath armor is just. And then the way he should, it's a horrifying thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, you almost would rather get run through oh, yeah. and just die than get crushed and suffocate yourself to death mm-hmm. with tiny little bars of bone jabbing at you while you're trying to get bre- Oh gosh, it was so nasty. You can hear bones crunching when the guy's slamming them with that hammer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, but the yeah. Irishman. Oh man, you know, and it, it's amazing how you, you watch a great movie and you see a guy do a role or you see a person, a girl do a role and then it's like you constantly follow them afterwards mm-hmm. in other movies. You look for them or they pop up and you're like, oh, this is going to be pretty good because that person, you know. Well, yeah, the guy that uh, played Hamish, he, he went on to play in the Harry Potter movies. He played Mad-Eye Moody. Right, um, right, right. Um, He's done so many different things that are really oh, good. Brandon Gleason. Brandon Gleason. Yeah. Oh God. Oh, see now there's a movie that <laughs> I wasn't on my. I don't. I don't know if I have it on here. It should be on here. That might have to get. But he was also in um, one of those. He out. was in uh, one of my favorite scary movies, uh, Twenty Eight Days Later. Yeah. I mean, he he's done a lot of really good stuff. But I was thinking of the other little Irishman that comes in. Oh yeah, the the one that says it's my island. My island, <laughs> yeah. I talked with God last night. <laughs> I'm gonna survive. What about me? Do you speak to know. your father? Or is your father a ghost, or do you just speak with the Almighty? Man, fuck. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, God, see, I don't even have that movie on here. It should be on here. Uh, I so many movies just kind of slipped my mind and then all of a sudden I started remembering stuff I was like oh yeah 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 well it's funny you know and 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 
like you just said that about Brendan Gleeson and, and probably one of my favorite movies for story has to be In Bruges In Bruges was a really good movie <laughs> and I watched that and um, yeah um, the only reason I watched it is because he was in it right you know I <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's funny what a because I couldn't remember the name of that damn movie until you just said that right now it's like fucking Bruges he's just like Walking around I'm just hating that place. It was just, oh my gosh, it was hilarious. She's, oh man, I, that movie just cracks me. It's just, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a funny because um, I like uh, a lot of people will pick movies based on an actor. They're like, oh, I mm -hmm. like that guy, so I'll watch this movie. But me, I'm a director snob. You're a director snob. Um, yes, I like. I have directors that I love, and I'll watch anything they make. I would have said that. Well, you know, yeah, because Clint Eastwood, great Some, director. My favorite directors are Mel Gibson and Robert Zemeckis. Right, Zemeckis uh, is pretty good. Um, like Gibson's really good. I, Gibson's good, and and for directing movies, I, you know, J.J. Abrams, yeah. fantastic director. He's so spotty, hit and miss with me. <laughs> uh, and, and here's somebody that probably, but Kevin Costner, Spielberg. His directing. No, you might not like Waterworld or uh, The Postman, but I think those are pretty good movies. Yeah, I like them. The Postman is very good. I had some very, very underrated movie. Uh, that that's a yeah. I, that one's really great. You really want to watch something? You know, you should watch that. It's 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 fascinating. Uh, Yeah, it's, yeah, watch it with what's happening now and be like, wow, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's all about this, uh, well, it's about Kevin Costner and his trick, but his, the protagonist, you know, is that is this guy that's leading this militia and he's running around, you know, build, building the militia and he talks about missing his calling. He's like, you know who I was before the war? You know what I did for a living? I sold photocopy machines. But now look at me, I'm a general. Yeah. You know, and, but he's a tyrannical beast. <laughs> and it's just, it's fascinating. It's a, it's, it's a, good, it's a good movie. I like it a lot. I don't uh, think I would have made my list. <laughs> no, it didn't make my list. It wasn't even on my list. Mm -hmm. But so, what was your next one? My next one, I think I'm going to go uh, in a totally opposite direction. <laughs> so for story, mm -hmm. and visually I liked it too. But I mean, for story wise, I like a man on fire. Good with movie. Denzel Washington. The, they did such a great job. It falls into, uh, you know, I have made up categories. You know, you have drama and action and blah, blah, blah. But me, I like to call that a revenge film. Revenge film, yeah. yeah. But they, did, they did such, so, so many movies, you're like, what justified doing all that? Or right. why? You know, why? You know, what? But that movie... You get and justification right they now. built that up with that little with the bricks and slapping them, you know, mm -hmm. doing that. And 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 throughout the rest of the movie, that's that's the image that keeps coming back to your brain as he's doing all the stuff. Is that clap click, you know, mm -hmm. with her starting off and and uh, you know he did such a great job of playing that drunk, mm -hmm. licking the inside of his lips and mm -hmm. you know pawn, you know, just pushing at those cheeks that are so dried out and. Uh, Holding that one bullet, you know, keep looking at it. And, uh, I had been reading some books just before that. Uh, this this author, I can't remember his name, but he wrote these two books about these two different operators, a younger operator and an older retired operator. And that story very similarly follows the older uh, operator character-wise. Not the story, but character-wise, and 
it's just fascinating the the psychosis that he has to get into of always checking his weapons. Well, it's funny the uh, always making sure there's a round in it. You know, just the, the director in that movie. Um, sometimes I think the, the director has a hard on for Denzel Washington because the last three movies that he did all have Denzel Washington, oh. and it's um, uh, two of them are revenge movies. Well, I guess you could say the third one is kind of a revenge movie also, but it's, his name's Antoine Fuqua. Antoine Fuqua. What do you? And um, uh, he did. Uh, he did Equalizer. He did Man on Fire. Yes, and he did a, a Equalizer, and then he also uh, was. Uh, he did uh, um, the Magnificent. So oh, like seven. One. Gosh, I had high hopes for that one. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just, uh, you just can't m- capture the magic of the originals. No. Even even as much as you try. And and there were some standouts in that movie that made you like, see, they should have just kept pushing with that. Like D'Onofrio's character in there, that big bear guy. You know? mm-hmm. That was a great push. You know, they should have pushed and found somebody to play, and I know it's going to be sacrilegious, but, uh, what's the, oh gosh, what's the comedian, the Chris, oh, um, Star Chris Pratt, Chris Pratt, they should have pushed and found somebody else to play Chris Pratt's part, you know, go find a... Go find a serious actor that's funny off screen right. and put him in that role. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I I find so often that, you know, it's like, oh, well, you're the perfect per- person. But some of our most memorable movies are when people play against type, right? Mm-hmm. Robin Williams in uh, Dead oh, Poets yeah. Society. Robin Williams in... The Photo Booth. Uh, the Photo Booth. Or... Um, that one was great. That's the one with Matt Damon. That was a um, Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting, right? So against character, so against type, but amazing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Mork for Mork. Mork for Mork, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, when 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 they when they do that, then all of a sudden you're like. Unless the character was originally written. Like, like, so like the original Ghostbusters is such a perfect example. You can tell how those characters were written for those exact actors to play those roles. Oh, right, because right? Dan Aykroyd's one of, the, one of the writers. Right, but but, <laughs> but you can tell that, that that those were written specifically for them. Oh, yeah, Tarantino does the same thing. I mean, right, so, but when they go back to recast that, mm-hmm. The, the people that they said, oh, well, you're like Bill Murray. No, that they're not. Right. They're, she's not Bill Murray. She doesn't no. act. She doesn't have the timing right. that he has. So the verbiage that he was using was specific. Speci- specifically Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd has such a uh, verbal rhyme to the, how he talks. Especially when he gets very nerd talky, mm-hmm. uh, that you just can't. It's hard to mimic. So, I think in that movie you could use the same cast. They should have just shuffled everybody. Right. Uh, if they would have shuffled everybody into the into different roles, all of a sudden that was a great cast. Mm-hmm. They just played the wrong characters. Right. And if they would have just, if she would have been the the geek instead of the funny one, because you're, you're you're just like yeah she's gonna crack a joke because she's gonna crack a joke, and so <laughs> none of the jokes landed. Right. They all fell flat. Why? Because you knew exactly what was gonna happen. Right. It, well, it is kind of funny how in that movie, you know, you have to look at the breakout characters, the ones that actually stole the show. Where Chris Hemsworth. Chris and, Hemsworth uh, against <laughs> type, right? Right. Like, who knew he was that funny? Right. Nobody knew he was that funny. Right. Because he's played serious colds, but off screen, he's really funny. That's like, that's like Brad Pitt, 
uh, George Brad, Clooney Brad Pitt's hilarious, and though. Matt Damon play all these serious people on screen, mm-hmm. and then you hear about the antics that they do to each other off screen, right. and you're like, oh, see, there's a movie that should be on my list for a story that, see, the problem is a lot of the mo- movies that I really, really like for story, most people consider really boring. <laughs> And that shouldn't be a criteria that I should leave them off, but the what was that one with uh, assassination Pitt? of Jesse James by the coward yeah. John Ford? Good movie. Holy crap, that's a great movie. Yeah. Just. Uh, What's that one Brad Pitt movie? It has a uh, Brad Pitt, George Clooney. Um, and he ends up shooting Brad Pitt in the head in a closet. It was a speaking. Oh, uh, it was kind of funny, but a dark comedy. Isn't it about the CIA? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's um. Burn after reading. Burn after reading. Yeah. Yes, that. I never saw it though. Great movie. I never actually saw it. That Brad Pitt's character was fantastic. Um, well, that's the thing about the the one Jesse James movie. He plays this. He plays a person that knows that people are hunting him, and yet he's trying to keep everything together and try to find his way out of this fog of, mm-hmm. of everything. And he's he's half paranoid, half cool, calm leader, and it's just the back and forth he goes in that movie is is, right. is really great. And then and then they cast such a great person to be Weasley John Ford, you know, a little affluent character. His little brother. Brother or cousin was a cousin. Was that a that was on your list? No, it wasn't, unfortunately. <laughs> That's the problem is like I saying, there's so many of these movies that I think of later. I'm trying to get back to what was the what was the one that you just said? Oh, Man on Fire. Oh yeah, that's right. You know, uh flick. Gosh, that's such a great movie. Antoine Fuqua. There's a I, I think the reason I liked it because I read a couple of books. There was a while there when I was really into books about operators and and spooks and things like that. Uh, Spartan that Mel Gibson that uh, Val Kilmer made is a movie called Spartan. And uh, wow, great movie! I've Little seen. movie Collateral uh, was a great movie. Um, and Man on Fire was like this little trifecta of Great uh, ex uh, spooks, ex special forces that were operators that became spooks later. What do you think of Sicario? Sicario was pretty good. I liked it. Uh, I just uh, I just bought. You know that I watched the uh, that movie kind of second one of those shoots you way up at the beginning Mm -hmm. with them pulling all those bodies out of the walls. And then it's like a roller coaster, you know, it, and you just go wham down. I don't know if you went any more twists and turns in it, mm-hmm. but it's just a wham down it, which is was really good. But that, I just uh, watched that they did a second Sicario called the Day of the Dead or yeah, Day of the, of the Sagato. Right, and so I uh, I watched that. It was it was it was quite good. It wasn't was it? as good as the first one, but. Uh, it was good. Oh, see, and there's another, you know, that, see, this is the problem is I've, I've watched way too many movies. <laughs> way not a, that's not too a, that's many not movies. <laughs> that is not a bad thing at all. Because, you know, I don't I have a Vince, I don't have a Benicio Del Toro movie on here. But, I mean, well, maybe I do. I well, think I have a, I, I, I think, I don't have it on my official list, but I, I have a, a list of all the movies I thought of. I have them. Uh, but like uh, the the unusuals, the you the usual suspects. Yes, that was my. That's on my list. Is it? That that's a fantastic movie. But but the one that just jumped in my brain was uh, is it the hunter, the hunted? Yeah, the one with um. Uh, Tommy Lee Tommy Jones. Jones. Yeah. Yeah, that's an older one, but it's really good. That's a really good movie. Yeah. But do you so you have the usual suspects? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, on my list uh, as far as a good story. Oh, um, has has twists and turns in it, and uh, 
fantastic cast. I mean, every everybody in there um, once did a great job. Once again, you could have filled that with with A list characters, A list actors with with. I don't know, with, with, with the spice of the day, and yet they didn't. They went so far. I mean, Kevin Pollack. Mm -hmm. Really? Kevin Pollack? That that goofy actor that does the the uh, impressions mm -hmm. is playing that guy? See, oh, it's a great character, the little weasel. He, oh, and then Del Toro, and oh, yeah, that, that that's a classic. Yeah, um, I'm trying to remember his name because not Pollock. <laughs> oh, with uh, Stephen uh, David Byrne? No, not the, not the, the 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 main character. Oh, uh, Spacey. Kaiser Sose. Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. That's his name. Yeah, Kaiser Sose. But um, but yeah, that's uh, cool definitely watching. on my that's definitely on my list um, of uh, you know, stories. Uh, See, there's so many. I hate that because it, all it does is start bringing up other movies that were just. That's the problem. There's so many movies that are just good, right? And so my problem was is which ones stood out to me that I would always watch again, right? And but Usual Suspects, wow. And there and, and once again, there's like these movies I lump together, the Usual Suspects. I like to lump it in with this is a great little movie. If you ever seen What to Do in Denver When You're Dead? Right. Things to do in Denver when you're dead. Holy smokes, that's a great little flick. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, and once again, he had, that was a great director on Usual Suspects. Brian Singer is really good. Oh, uh, can be. Yeah. Once again, that they they're always sometimes just hit and miss, and and a lot of times I think it comes down to. Uh, Studio forcing them well, to use people. The thing is, I don't, I never, I hardly ever blame uh, um, a movie for being bad on the director as much as I, on the original story itself and stuff like that, and maybe the actors suck. But, um, you know, for a while there, I thought maybe that Spielberg was starting to slide, you know, that, you know, he hadn't done anything. You know, fantastic in my opinion. Because I didn't, I didn't really. I liked AI, but I didn't really like it that much. But when he did um, Ready Player One, he's a god again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I read the book. You know. And so when I watched the movie, Ready Player One was great. It really wasn't. <laughs> and that didn't look like any freaking video game I've ever played. That that was the problem I had. Was they went so weird with the video game stuff that it was like I don't a lot of it was like I, well if you doesn't look open, like the games if I if you played. had an open world game where you could be any character you wanted that's kind of what it would look like no but the hub worlds and all that were just like no there's look at the games that we have now none of them look like that. That, that's the, it wasn't all the, it was just like, come on now, <laughs> at least, because you know, every, anybody that's played lots of video games and was watching that and loved all that pulp culture and all that stuff, it didn't look like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I didn't like it. I didn't think it was that good. <sighs> wow. <laughs> yeah. It was great. No. But yeah, Ready Player One, definitely good. Yeah, it was funny, um, you know, uh, tangent. Um, uh, I, you know, on my days off, I don't have a whole lot to do. Um, uh, you know, so you watch Netflix or whatever. Um, as far as, you know, good recommendations for everybody that's watching, um, <laughs> On Netflix, there's a movie called I Am Mother. Fantastic. Is it? If you haven't seen mm -hmm. it. I haven't seen it. Oh, my God, it's good. The Norseman. The Norseman's a good show, yeah. You want to crack up a little bit? Yeah. That one's pretty good. Um, <laughs> I, 
I only know that because they just put a new season out, and I saw it. It's like, ah, I'm going to have to watch that. I'm trying to think of other Netflix stuff that I watched that was good. Altered Carbon was pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I liked it. It got a little draggy in the middle. You know, sometimes they do one or two episodes too long and stuff like that. Um, I love the premise for... Oh, gosh. See, this is my problem. Is I always forget names of things. Right. Um, We're going to have to Google things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the one in, where uh, the mob guy goes to Sweden. Right. What was the place where they had the uh, this, the Olympics in Sweden? <laughs> oh, I can't remember. But it was it started off good, then it kind of just slid down. Um, it was one of their very first shows that they did. Uh, as far as uh, The Witcher was okay. trying to I'm trying to think of, of other Netflix show shows um, Netflix originals uh, it's funny they have they must one. have been that really good huh yeah that I could really that I could really think of him um, oh, here's another one I um, it's funny because I never watched it when it first came out, but uh, you know I saw it on Netflix and it was good. Uh, Splice, that was good. Um, you know what's interesting is how Sucker Punch I actually f watched for the very first time. Oh, Sucker Punch, you know the story. It was pretty good, eh, but the visuals on that are just. Mm -hmm. uh, when she's fighting those three large samurai. Mm -hmm. The idea of making them giant was just a stroke of genius. I don't know. There's uh It was it was definitely a visual movie. That was awesome when the when I can't remember her name, when she climbs up into that little mech that mech and blasts off to go up to shoot the uh, the bombers was just an amazing shot. Uh the train heist was awesome. You know, all that's just, just great. I, I think that's a visual. I know a lot of people don't like that movie, but I, I think it's visually stunning. Yep. Uh, but it's funny because, uh, you know, um, I will talk to people and I'll ask them, you know, have you seen this movie? Or I'll make a reference to some movie and they're you know, like, I, I've never seen that. And that was the very first movie that I ever had the scene that other people had seen. Mm. I'm like, you know, I was watching it for the first time, and they're like, what, you've never seen this? I'm like, no. There was that <laughs> front, 13 front, three, I don't know, it was the one with Ben Affleck that he did on there, on Netflix. That was a pretty good movie. Mm. It was all right. Um, Here's the one that I haven't watched yet, uh, but it just came out. It was made for Netflix, Fatal Affair. But it looks so much like the original uh, um, Fatal Attraction, uh, but it's just black actors instead of. It probably is. It probably is a, just a remake. Yeah, it's just they've been doing a lot of those, which yeah. is great idea, you know, uh, to an extent. Yeah. Um. I'm sorry. They had two new movies that come out on there that just made me kind of laugh a little watching the trailer. That oh, new one with the uh, Charlize Theron. Oh, that uh, the one. Yeah, I actually watched that. I was, that was pretty good. Really? Mhm. Mm it just made me kind of laugh. Yeah, it's called The Order. Yeah, that and just it looked. Was, it was uh, actually really good. Um, the uh, story was um, uh, basically that um, for some reason some people uh, are immortal, and um, they dream about each other. Um, and so when somebody becomes immortal or dies and doesn't actually die, you know, uh, they, uh, you know, so they, they kind of, uh, group together, um, to protect themselves because, um, there's large groups of people 
um, especially the, the bad guys in the movie, they made it into a pharmaceutical company because they want to drain their bone marrow and stuff to see if they can recreate this in other people. So they're actually trying to capture all these immortals and, mm. and turn everybody into immortal. That didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> that one and Cursed. I haven't seen Cursed yet, but it's new. And uh, But yeah, the, the I watched the Charlize Theron one because I love Charlize Theron. And, re, and that reminds me, a movie that I watched just the other day that um, I also think is one of my favorite movies is Devil's Advocate. Devil's Advocate. That was, mm -hmm. the, that was the movie that Charlize Theron and Keanu Reeves were in together. Yeah, that was pretty good. And Yeah. I guess if I... Two movies I like her the best, and I guess were probably uh, Mad Max mm -hmm. and uh, Two Days in the Valley. Have you seen Atomic Blonde? Yeah. <laughs> like a female John Wick. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> in fact, they train together. Right. You know. It, it's like with that movie Curse, you know, I'm going to sound really horrible there. I'm going to sound like a male show when it's big. Uh, guys play enough video games, read enough comics where the female is the lead. So, we actually love that stuff a lot. The stuff that's hard to get past is when, when you, like, watch Arnold Schwarzenegger wield the sword in Conan. Think of how strong he is, and he still has some times when that has some overplay to it because it's so heavy, and he can't completely control it. But when he holds it, he holds it from strength, from his arms and his chest and his back. Yeah. That girl on Cursed, when she had to pick up the sword, she had to lift her elbows up to try to <laughs> hoist the sword up because she's having to try to push here to get more strength up to hold the sword. It made the sword... Yeah. Uh, so, there's little things like that that like will take me out of a movie quickly. I don't know. It just does. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I I said it's horrible. It sounds horrible. The same thing with kid actors. They just annoy the crap out of me. Uh, yeah. Uh, but when they, you know, and you see a girl holding a rifle and she has to. <clears throat> well, if she doesn't look natural. Yeah, yeah, probably because they picked an actress that hasn't ever shot a gun. Right. Well, and it's and it's. But you can't. But a lot of times it's just a strength thing. It's about but, being able to hold it straight, you know. But when you saw like John Wick three and you saw what's her name Halle Berry doing all that crap. Did I bring Halle? Did I say anything about Halle Berry? <laughs> did I say anything? So that movie was fantastic, right? She so was awesome. It's all in about fact, training. In fact, can we get her standalone? Yeah. No shit. Let's see that. I'd love to see it. That was awesome. Her working with those dogs was amazing. Was amazing. That that whole choreo. Oh man, that scene with those two getting out of. Well, that's the thing. That was fantastic. They could easily do with the John Wick series is even when it runs its course and you know we see the next one or the final John mm -hmm. John Wick, they could easily go back to any character and do a standalone movie. Oh yeah. Those people. Well, but it's not so much that she did the training. A, she did the training, but B. She had the requisite strength to hold the things. Oh yeah. In a yeah. proper, you know, it, and and I'm just saying that. So they announced. Uh, oh, I'm getting in trouble again. They announced Natalie Portman's gonna play Thor. And so at Comic Con, yeah. So you know, Thor. Thor. So Thor's gonna be. A female. Yeah. So the so Natalie Portman's character in the last movies, Thor movies, she's gonna get Thor's power, and she's gonna be Thor. Did they ever do that in a comic book? Yeah. Okay. But when she was Thor, she was Thor. Yeah, she was bigger, but now she's going to be Thor. She's <laughs> so they, 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 they announced it at Comic-Con, right? And they gave her the hammer to hold. And she's holding it. And while she's talking, the, it's, it's going down. It's going down. And, and the director, YT, TT, had to go over it and hold it up for her. Wow. So, so, you know in that movie, the hammer part's just going to be computer generated. 
So she'll probably just run around with a stick the whole time. And in my brain, it's going <laughs> to... She just... That's probably a good idea. Well, he, but, but I mean, how am I supposed to think she's the god of thunder, you know, whatever, blah, blah. And she can't even hold the stupid prop up. And it's not like it's a hand. It's not. Right. It's not like you know that's plastic. A, that that's that that's uh, fifty fifty carbon. Whatever. What you know. Right. You. And. <laughs> visual optics matter, and 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 I think that's one thing. People fight against, you know. Yeah. And they don't want to admit it. And that's funny. Yeah, it just oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I thought that last third Thor movie was great. But I didn't like well, never mind. So um what's next on your list? What's next on my list? I don't know. I thought it here, let's see, let's uh, here we go, I'll change it up again. The Seven Samurai, Jeez. and I and I probably could. How long it's been since I've seen that? I could probably just lump in Seven Samurai, Ran, um, Roshiman, uh, pretty much any of uh, Akira Kurosawa's samurai movies, and even his non-samurai movies are just spectacular. And when you start realizing how many of your favorite westerns or just some of your favorite movies mm -hmm. are just remakes of Kurosawa movies, yeah. you start realizing how influential the guy was. But Seven Samurai might be the pinnacle of everything he did. Well, probably Kagamusha. That one's that's pretty good. But but uh I like the Seven Samurai. I, I, you know, and once again, uh, Toshiro Mufune, uh, the samurai guy of samurai. You know, if you loved, you know, Yojimbo. Oh gosh, that's that was a hard one to pick between this or Yojimbo. And uh, but he went to Kurosawa and asked if he could play the non-samurai. The seventh guy, the the peasant guy that wants to be a samurai, and play that goofy character, and he was like, "What?" Because he was supposed to play the older, the not the 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 master samurai, the master swordsman. He was supposed to be that guy, and he asked if he could play against type and play the, and it, it made the movie, you know. Uh, it was it was, and then the guy that they had play the consummate samurai. I don't think. I don't think I've ever seen him do anything else. If he did, he's probably just a, a secondary character. And yet, uh, the, the movie's masterful. It really is. It's just, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's so good. I, I don't remember enough of it. Like I said, it's been so long. I remember it was long. Yeah, it was <laughs> long. I remember it was like Godfather long. Yeah, most people would probably know it more as Bugs Life Now or The Magnificent Seven. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like Yojimbo, you would like that. You'd like, um, uh, I think for Fistful of Dollars, it was Yojimbo with Clint Eastwood. Uh, Last Man Standing with Bruce Willis. That's a really cool uh, rendition of it. If you want to, that, that's a fun movie. There's a scene in there where uh, he's finally at the end, he's going to go to war. Mm -hmm. He's got his two forty fives out there and he's got like, I don't know, like a, a hundred magazines for the gun. Mm -hmm. And he's just sitting there loading <laughs> clip after clip of these things. I mean, just... Now I think he goes and spreads them all throughout this, this city. Right. And, uh... Because you can only carry so many. Yeah, his 1911 play on that was just amazing. That's one of the things that I liked about the John Wick one. And that one scene where he starts stashing guns down that hallway because he knows that's going to be his exit. Mm -hmm. He has all these guns stashed. It's like, oh, smart. 
Yeah. Well, that's all from uh, that's all from uh, hard to kill. No, hard boiled. Hard boiled. Hard boiled with uh, chilling fat. Uh, great flick. If you, yeah. yeah. There's some of those John movies. Wu's. John Woo, you know. Oh gosh, the replacement killers. John Woo was actually kind you of. You might think that was too. goofy, but that's a great movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, then he did that one with the. Uh, Face off. Well, I did Face Off was a great movie, but uh, what's the ones that hard target? What's the one with... Van Damme was hard target. No, oh, with uh, Marky Mark, with Mark Wahlberg. Oh. That everybody thinks is ridiculous. I, I, It's a fun little flick. Are you talking about the one where he's the, the assassin? And yeah. And has a... Uh, Blue Diamond Phillips in it also. Blue Diamond Phillips. He's the bad guy. Yeah. What the hell was that called? I'll think of it. But yeah, that's a. That's well, I want to think hard time. No. That was that was a, definitely a fun movie. That's a little to watch. fun flick, right? Huh? Fun little flick. Had, uh, I'm just trying to do a job here. I'm just. They had uh, what's his name um, or what's her name uh, from uh, Married with Children. Christina. Christina Applegate. Applegate yeah. Christina. Yeah, she plays his 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 girlfriend. That's mm-hmm. just a that's just a jerk. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm working on it, baby. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Everybody was trying to take advantage of him. Yeah, yeah. It was a great character. He's that a format for being a hired killer. Yeah, yeah. Straight jacking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any of your aloe vera bullshit. Yeah, it's funny. Leno Len. It's funny what sticks in your head from movies. But yeah. <laughs> That's a great. That, that that that's actually a funny little. That's what's great about this, is one movie spars your conversation about this one, this one, this one, this one. This one. Yeah. Uh, I love samurai movies. Uh, 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 um, the Hidden Blade. Uh, the Last Samurai. Well. We'll talk about the. The the. The newest one? Well, the newest one, but there was a... I think it was called The Last Samurai. The Last Samurai was with Tom Cruise. Yeah, so it wasn't The Last Samurai. I think it was The Last... It's The Last something or other, but it was... Gosh, I hate... can't remember things. You should have your phone to Google shit. <laughs> well, the problem is, is... is I wouldn't know what the... What the... What to call it. Sometimes you have to Google the actor. Yeah. So you can find it. Well, see, and that's the thing, though. It's a Japanese flag. I, right. And, and I don't know who was the star in it. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny. The, thir- the 13 Assassins. You can usually find that on Netflix. Wow. Wow. Great movie. I love that one. Was that a Japanese film? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's about this, uh, I think he's the, it's either the, that, that name sounded like the, the Antonio little Peter's brother son. of the Shogun, or he's the, I think he's actually the Shogun's brother-in-law, who just walks around this whatever. He, he rapes some girl and then, uh, cuts off her arms and legs. For funsies and cuts her tongue out. And why is this movie good? <laughs> well, these bunch of feudal lords just say we can't have this anymore. This guy's got to go. He's just right. and so they get together and they uh, they go to this samurai and ask him to you know disgrace his family by going and killing this guy. <laughs> and he's like, okay, and and. And then he goes out and gets these other 12 assassins to help him out. And then they they find out where he's going to be going with his entourage, which he travels with the battalion. And uh, they pick a town and then booby trap it all up and set it all up for their, them to fight him. And they, and they go after him. And it's, it's just this sword flinging fest of just samurai swords stuck in heaps in the ground like so they can run and just grab one and go and when that one busts and dulls they can grab another one and just go 
just go and it's just ah it, 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 it's a fun flick it's fun so what was next on your list oh did you do one well the, the last one you did was the the, the seven samurai. seven samurai what did you do I don't know if I did anything because um, we've got off on a tangent um, let's see here because I already mentioned Hacksaw Ridge right mm -hmm. so how many is that that's yeah, it's three. One, two. No, my first one was, uh, what was my first one? <laughs> oh, Beef for Vendetta um, was my first one. And then what else is there? Was it? Um, as far as, uh, it's a fairly simple story, but I still love it because it, it does drag you along real well, is I'll have to go with Gump. Gump? Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, that's a great movie, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then once again, being the uh, director snob that I am, that's a Robert Zemeckis film, which makes it fantastic. You know, one of the things that I miss, there was this one uh, TV show that was Spielberg and Zemeckis did it, and it was called Amazing Stories. Amazing Stories, yeah. That was a great, that was great a pretty good show. TV show. Because they were all standalone stories, just short stories. They were fantastic. Gump is a really good movie. Yeah, it is. And um, there's n not a human alive that can watch that movie and watch that scene where he's talking to Jenny underneath that tree after she's dead and not cry. I challenge, I challenge anyone to watch that scene and not cry. Well, they get you, they get you about three times. Yeah. There's that one. Uh, Bubba, when Bubba dies. No. no. It's, all with, it's all Jenny driven, you know. But I do know how to love. Right. There's that. And then I think the one that gets me the most is Is he like me? When she introduces him and his son's watching the TV. Right. And he's looking back there and he's like, Is he smart? Yeah. Or is he like me? Yeah. And that's probably, I think that, because that's, that's him coming to realization with who he is and his whole character. Everything, that he, all this, all this he's accomplished. He still thinks he's just a dumb idiot, but you know, and all the laughs in that movie. I mean, that's the great thing about dramas is uh, that when 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 there is a laugh, Get shot it off. When there is a laugh in that movie, it is the most hilarious shit ever. Because like when <laughs> when he's driving his boat and he sees Lieutenant Dan on the <laughs> wheelchair and stuff, and he waves at him, and then he jumps in the just water. Just, and swims over to him, and then that boat crashes, and he's like, that, that's, my, that's my boat. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best. Well, the best part is Lieutenant Dan just looks at him like, that's forced. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I thought I'd try out my sea legs. You ain't got no legs with you, Dad. <laughs> he's like, I know, you idiot. He wrote me a letter. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, those two. Oh, yeah, that. Yo, mama sure love you, boy. <laughs> what was funny is, what was fascinating, he talked about how he came up with the voice for him. And he said that they cast that kid, and they realized that instead of trying to get the kid to talk like him, he tried to talk like the kid. Yeah, he tried to talk. So the kid talked in a very matter-of-fact way, you know, and he had that son. And so he was like, so he patterned his speech after the kid, which was fascinating. Right. I love it. I just love his stories, you know. He's like, you know, people say that miracles don't happen every day. Well, they do. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know if it's just as good, but Waterboy is about as, uh, pretty good with that. About the same character, right? Well, yeah. Oh gosh, that's 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 a good little flick. That's the problem. Well, the funny thing is, is um, like Waterboy, Dumb and Dumber, those kind of movies. But the funny movies, they go into a different category for me because most people would just call those comedies. But me, there's comedies that are. Quotable, 
I love quotable movies, movies that you quote all day, and hopefully people get the reference. But yeah, I mean, I just, I just love almost every line from Dumb and Dumber is quotable. I mean, you just name it, and it's quotable. I mean, like the very first scene when he pulls over and he's like, you know, and he's like, "Excuse me, I'm trying to get to a speech, but my driver's a little lost." You know how to get to the, you know, and, and she's like, you know, go down there. And he's like, that's a lovely accent. New Jersey? <laughs> she's like, no, Austria. And he's like, Austria. Well, good day, mate. <laughs> I mean, the, every line in that movie, I mean, God. Hey, Harry, old buddy, old pal. How about a little drink before you go out? It's like, oh, sure, whatever you think will help. That's what I like about you, Harry. You're a regular guy. You know, it, it was, <laughs> see, this is the problem. You know, somebody, like I said, so many movies I forget about. Maybe they, and then, so they probably shouldn't be on the list, but man, I really like uh, Cable Guy. Cable Guy's another fantastically quotable movie. You know, uh, but the only problem I have with Cable Guy, and I'm sure you might, well, I don't know if you'll agree or not, but uh, the, the problem I had with Cable Guy is it didn't end in the right spot. Because mm. what I would have thought would have been a better ending than what they did was when he falls off of the thing and hits the dish and all the TVs go, Psh! that's where it should have ended. Mm. It should have ended with everybody in the audience thinking that that guy just killed himself. Mm -hmm. I think that would have been a much better ending, but no, that it shows him in an ambulance and then the guy goes, you know, don't worry, buddy, you'll be okay. And he's like, you're my buddy. You know, that kind of thing. But, I mean, I think it would have been just great to have him to go, I have to kill the babysitter, and then he falls off. Right, right. Static, the end, roll credits. Yeah, I, I love that movie for the fact that I felt like we were actually seeing him and what his childhood must have been like a little bit. <laughs> Probably. Well, he talks about growing up. Well, he talks about growing up watching TV so much, you know. And, and so that's the kid that sat in front of the TV and just. Yeah. The fact of course, that he, he also talks about that. The fact that he had to do the. the all the time. That he had to do the. the Yes, that was great. <laughs> oh man, and, and 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 the problem was, is I bet a lot of people just that went over their head. Had no idea what that was from. That was definitely a pop culture reference, you know. And it, it's when they do, you know, you're just like, oh my gosh, that was. Uh, <laughs> I think maybe that's the reason why I put a little, a little crevice in my heart, you know, a little, little nudge. It just <laughs> it burred its way in there. Cable Guy is fantastic. That's on Netflix right now. Um, but yeah, it's uh, um, sometimes I wonder if uh, Matthew Broderick was uh, the character that they should have put opposite him. Um, but the thing is, is the character that they put opposite of him had to be straight, the straight uh -huh. guy, and he he did an okay guy, an okay job of that role. But I mean, I don't know, yeah, yeah, it could have literally been anybody. They probably could have, but yeah, <laughs> I think they did it right because yeah, I don't know. No, I, I think it worked right because at the time he was playing that character really good because it's like that could be the same character from. Uh, president was that what it was called what was the one that he did where he was the high school principal with the are you talking about where Roderick the, yeah he played the high school principal had a I think it was oh Kirsten the Dunst. one where is it set in the future no oh. no it was uh, he's having an affair I think with one of the students and Oh gosh! There's a, uh, it, it's there's a it's Netflix, a funny little there's flick. There's a Netflix uh, TV show that was um, set in the future where he's the principal and he and all the people, all the adults die, 
It's after the apocalypse. They either die or they turn into zombies. You want to watch a fun movie if you love 80s pop culture and you love that ty- those old type of movies. There's a show, there's a movie on, I think it was on Netflix. Maybe it was on Amazon Prime. It's called Turbo Kid. Gr- great movie. We actually, uh, um, um, anybody that's watching, you've probably never heard of this place. I used to work as a manager at a place called Brewbies. We actually played that at Brewbies. Oh, really? Time. Yeah. That is uh, a great little flick. I mean, mm-hmm. Election. Mm-hmm. Election is about... Uh, about this girl who runs for oh it's a uh, Reese Witherspoon that's right she runs for uh, class president right. and that. all the stuff that she does to try to win mm-hmm. and he's the principal I think or the right. vice principal that gets caught in the middle of all of it and then, right. but you can see that character right there being the character that is in Cable Guy mm-hmm. uh, see here so I basically have gone through four I think I've gone through most everything but I haven't but I mean I can so what I've been doing is lumping some of my some of the stuff together I mean the Star Wars obviously right that's probably my it's probably my favorite 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 and you're talking about four through six right yeah and then I even <laughs> dialed them all the way back was it Empire the first one probably just the first one just because it was, it was the one that blew it all open for me. it was Empire. Even Empire is a superior movie. It's just, uh, there's something about the first one. That, but I wanted to bring in this, uh, and I'm going to just lump these together, but, because I don't know which one I like best, but, Silverado. Nice. Open Range. Open Range is great. Tombstone. Tombstone is probably the best, uh, in my opinion, is the best western I've ever seen. I would, I would probably say Tombstone. The only problem, though, well, Open Range was very, was so good. Yes. It was so pure of a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then to see the bad, to see the good guy, just, uh, are you the one who killed my friend? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I enjoyed it. And you know he he says enjoyed as he's getting shot in the head. I mean he just pulls his gun and bam. I mean that that's the one guy they had to make sure they got out of the the fight. Mm-hmm. And, and there's just little lines in that, like you said, quotable lines. But mm-hmm. don't stand behind me, boss. And all of a sudden you know exactly who this guy was for a long time of his life. You think he was something else, you know. But now all of a sudden you know he was a gunfighter. He was a, you know, he was an outlaw probably. But it's like, wow, there's something. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Uh, but yeah. Tombstone, it's, oh, you talk about quotable lines. Some oak I am. Well, the thing is, is um, you're an oak. And, and, and there's the same line. You get to quote it twice. I, what? You are an oak. Right. And then later, so yeah, old guy I am. am. <laughs> but um, I mean, I'm uh, here, Huckleberry. But um, there are scenes in that movie still that give me goosebumps. Oh yeah. You know that's a funny thing. You know um, when I listen to music, that's one of the ways that I tell whether it's a great song or not is I my hair stands up mm. on my arms, and uh, there's scenes in that movie. That's still when they say it, my hair stands up. Oh, really? And the scene that I'm talking about is when he uh, he's at the train station where the, the, the his older brother's about to leave, mm-hmm. and he he shoots Stillwell, and he he started, and he says to uh, to Ike, he's like, take a good look at him, Ike. You know, that's what you know. I, I, if I see a red sa- red sash, I killed a man wearing it, and he's like, now run, you cur. You tell them that I'm coming, and hell's coming with me. And every time I hear that fucking line, it's like, yeah. and I don't think there's any well, actor that could have pulled that line off better than Kurt Russell. You couldn't find a, a better actor. In fact, it was because of Kurt Russell that that movie even got finished. Mm, really? Yeah, the, um, there was a, a couple of directors that dropped out. Mm. 
And so he's like, well, fuck it, let's finish this. And so him and, you know, Doc Holliday and you know, Val Kilmer, they worked together and they got that damn thing finished. Wow. <laughs> well, the, the, uh, well, and the great thing about that, and then the, that, that the next shot was them flipped to the to them riding the horses. The four horsemen, yeah, the yes. four horsemen of the apocalypse. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> I, I know it was done on purpose, but I mean, is that just, that's just amazing. Yes. You know, and, and what's funny is, is as good as that is, you know, almost the, the counterpart was that Costner's Wyatt Earp. Mm -hmm. And I almost like their hunting down of the Cowboys a little bit better. And that, and Costner's version? Yeah, and Costner's version, because it was a little colder. Yeah. A little bit, but, you know, like I said, it's, 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 and it, I, that one's a good movie. That it's one, just, that one scene where that guy's smoking opium, mm -hmm. he grabs that barrel, you see, you know, you see Kurt Russell. Uh, well, what, the, the, the thing that I love about that scene, it's not so much the, boom, it's when you watch that 50 caliber peacemaker, <laughs> it literally bucks in his hand like this, you know what right. I mean? <laughs> it, you you know the ferocity of that. It was oh, just yeah. that was awesome. Yep, just the flash coming out of that thing would probably blow his head completely apart. But Kilmer stole that movie. Uh, I don't know. You know it's because uh, um, Kate, you are a good woman. Because uh, you each, might also be the Antichrist. Christ, yes. <laughs> But um, <laughs> that might be one of the best best lines ever uttered in a movie. Comparing those two, um, I mean, you know, once again, every actor in there did their part real well. Because I even liked uh, um, Curly Bill Brocious. I mean, I thought uh, Powers Booth did a great job. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, you know, all of those scenes, like where Wyatt, you know, is laying on the ground and bullets are whizzing by and stuff, and they're like, Wyatt, you know, what do we do? What do we do? And, he's, and he just fucking stands up. Screw it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's great. Right. Well, I mean, and then you know, Unforgiven in there too. I I like that movie. I would put that in. You know that that movie was originally owned um, by Costner. Costner was trying to get that movie made for so long, but nobody would front him the money. And so he just sold that to Eastwood, and Eastwood uh, have it together. I have so many westerns on here that I love. Mm -hmm. The Searchers. I still uh, think I'd put two The Wild out. Bunch. Yeah, but I still think I, if, you know, as far as uh, westerns, I think I'd put Tombstone on top almost everything. Because I love old Clint Eastwood movies. Um, my favorite, you know, it's funny because everybody has their favorite Clint Eastwood old western, mm -hmm. spaghetti westerns. My favorite is High Plains Drifter. High Plains Drifter? Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, it's the stupidest, I mean, it's such a simple story, but it's so good, you know. The Outlaw of Josie Wales is good. Mm -hmm. um, a little movie that he made that doesn't get a lot of love, but I just... You ever seen City Heat? Yes. With Burt Reynolds. <laughs> him and yeah. Burt Reynolds. Burt That's Reynolds great. is one of the most underrated actors. Burt Reynolds. I, no, because yeah. Sharky's Machine, I'd put that on any list. I watch I watch most, a lot of his movies, and then I watch other movies, and it's like, how come he wasn't the lead in this movie? And it's like... Oh, he needed to have done more in his prime. It's the it's, it's same thing with Eastwood. You watch him in Dirty Harry, and you're like, oh my gosh, if he would have made XYZ movie, mm -hmm. it would have been so much better than who they had do the movie at the time. Right. But he wasn't popular enough. Right. I mean, you, you think Dirty Harry is popular now, but it really wasn't that popular. Uh, yeah. It started to get popular, but I mean, yeah, it, there was so many. There was so many. Uh, he he did one. Um, <laughs> I hate when I can't remember the name. Right. Of it. Um, was it a, one of the Dirty Harry ones? Or was no, no. It's just a. Uh, uh, he plays this. This sheriff 
from Arizona that goes to pick up a prisoner from New York City to bring him back. Mm -hmm. It's a great movie. So it's not a western. It's a more. It's a it's a it's a modern western, mm -hmm. pretty much. You know, it's a quasi mm -hmm. modern weapon. Uh, modern. But uh, have you ever seen Sharky? If Machine? I can talk. Oh yeah, Sharky's Machine. Oh, I love. Um, Burt Reynolds was great in his time. Um, but Sharky's Machine was one of the, was not only a great movie, but it set new standards for a stuntman. Oh, and there's another one that, oh gosh, there's some, oh, Coogan's Bluff. Coogan's Bluff, I actually have seen that. Yes. I love that. I love Where Eagles Dare, one of the best army movies ever done. Um, Guns of Navarone was great. Two oh. Mules for Sister, Sister Sarah. That was good. If you haven't seen that, do you yourself know, a favor and go watch it. Let's talk about how you just said that the best of whatever genre. What, in your opinion, what is your favorite or the best, I guess it is your opinion, Vietnam flick? Vietnam flick? Yep. Yeah. See if I agree. <laughs> I probably have to say now. It's probably we were soldiers. Yes, that's the exactly what one I would choose. I mean, Good Morning Vietnam. That was good. It's pretty damn good. You know, another great one that that's great, but it's hard to watch. The Killing Fields. Yeah. Um, might be the best movie, one of the better better movies ever made. The reason that I choose. But it's we, tough to watch. The reason I choose We Were Soldiers over any of those others. Because, you know, you have Platoon, great movie, um, you know, uh, Killing Fields, like you were saying, um, Apocalypse, Apocalypse Now. now. But um, the I reason mean, that I put We are we Were Soldiers is because almost every Vietnam flick, you know, Full Metal Jacket, you name it, these soldiers are walking through a jungle and they never discuss what their purpose is. They're right. literally just looking for Charlie. Right. And so they're going to take them out. But in We Were Soldiers, it was the air cavalry was just barely invented, and they were going to helicopter into this one place where they said that the bad guys were at, and they were going to search that area and take out the bad guys. But that was fantastic to actually see an aerial shot of the battlefield, and and I mean they. They just went off historical records of what happened here and, you know, how these guys got cut off over here, mm -hmm. you know, and it was great. It was oh, one yeah. of the best stories ever of Vietnam. Well, not only that, but it, and and in the making of it, he just created amazing characters. I mean, mm -hmm. how he was still able to do character development in a historical drama right. was amazing. Uh, and, uh, Samuel like Jack, uh, not Sam, uh, Sam Elliott's character. Right. Oh my gosh! And um, morning, well, Sergeant. Enough. Who made you the fucking weather man? I mean, it's just like <laughs> that was not the not what I was expecting. Well, what was funny is um, another thing that was great about that is they that was one of the first Vietnam flicks where you also get to see the other side because mm -hmm. they were showing what the Vietnamese were doing underground and you know right. their tactics and everything it was just the best way to do it but now that I say that no no wait that's not that's not Vietnam there's another movie that does that that shows both sides is Iwo Jima Iwo Jima yeah that uh, movie that Eastwood did again. Well, he did he did he did Iwo Jima and then he did Sands of Iwo Jima right which yeah together it was really good I mean because yeah. The, the you know as you were talking the thing that that he does in that movie uh, we were soldiers is he shows you when you go to battle it's never just a oh well, we're superior well you know people are gonna fight you know uh, this one of the stories I was working on I started buying old John Wayne movies because I wanted to use him as my character a... so I could have reference for John him well, there's this little movie in here called Back to Baton, and it's about 
Bataan was an island in the Philippines. And it's about how they were freeing the Philippines and, and what the Filipino people did during World War II to fight the Japanese. And it's just like that. It's a great, it's a, it's a little movie where, where there's so many stories that get lost in history and you don't, and people underestimate the resolve of a people and their love of their right. country. That's you know, you think of the Philippines, huh? But their love for the Philippines and what they're willing to stand up and mm -hmm. fight. And, and, and some with pitchforks and, and hoes and... Well, it's funny you, you saying that, too, because um, that was another thing that was great about that movie, We Were Soldiers, because it starts out where the French are there. And it shows how the French were defeated and run out of there, um, which was a great, you know, score for the Vietnamese. But it was also um, there's a there's a documentary that I watched that uh, was uh, was on Netflix. It was a uh, Vietnam, um, but it, what was great about it is um, you know you hear about these these people, you know Ho Chi Minh, etc., and you just hear that name, and you hear things like the Ho Chi Minh Trail, and all that kind of stuff. But um, that that documentary actually talked about who he was and why he was so important to the people, mm -hmm. and that was great. Because um, it's funny because you know, you know, Vietnam at first, all Ho Chi Minh was was he was a savior of their people who um, helped um, them uh, overthrow their own tyrannical government. Right, mm -hmm. and so he was trying to create a free society. And at that point, we as Americans, we heard about this happening, and we were sending all kinds of aid and all this kind of stuff to them. And um, at one point, we just kind of stopped, didn't much care anymore. And they were still looking for help, and so they started getting help from the communists, China. Mm -hmm. And then, lo and behold, uh, at that point, it was uh, JFK that was in office, and he's the one that went, oh shit, we gotta stop this spread of communism. And so that's when the things started to ramp up in Vietnam. So yeah, it was, uh, it, it's really, you know, you know, I love history, but uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. But when movies get that right, Mm -hmm. I just love that. I love the whole his nervousness of being called the Seventh Cavalry and understanding that last oh, time Custer. we had the Seventh Custer. Cavalry was C Custer, <laughs> and he didn't want to be Custer. He wasn't going to go in there and just get chopped down like Custer did. I mean, almost did. And if you ever want a fun little movie to watch, watch um, Little Big Man. Yes. With Dustin Hoffman. I would put that on the list. Uh, you know that that might. You know, just just for the little interactions there, especially with him and Custer at the end. Yeah, I think I might. Think I think there's two thousand Indians down there in that valley, and they're just waiting for you to ride down in there. I just yeah. love that. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I just love the um, his narration in that movie. Mm -hmm. If I had to put cowboy movies in rank, he would probably be right after Tombstone. Really. Little Big Man. Little yeah. Big Man. That's a pretty good movie. It's a very good movie. And when he, you know, but he, he's uh, when that. Custer says whatever, you know, you know, we're gonna go down there and then we have the animal in a surprise and he's like, I had him. <laughs> All I have to do is tell him the truth. You know, and then he's like, you know, it's like you go down there. It's like, so you don't want me to go down there? And he's like, No, you go down there and you face those men. And it's not gonna be, you know, a bunch of women and children like it was at blah blah blah. You go down there, and that's going to be, think. you know, a thousand, you know, Sioux Braves down yeah. there. And, <laughs> you know, when they get done with you, you're just going to be a little greasy spot. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, it was really good. You know what? You know, a movie I grew up watching called The Wind Walker. Mm -hmm. That was a pretty good little movie. But, I don't even know who's in that. Yeah, I didn't know, but he is just... <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> there's, so many, there's so many Westerns, that's the problem. They're so... Well, yeah. I mean, it's almost like you got to do this list per genre. Mm -hmm. And then and then even, like, 
Western is is a man called well, a man called Horse. It's one of my favorites. I think that one's pretty good. But like Jeremiah Johnson, that's not con technically a Western. That's a a frontier movie. I mean, you'd have to break that down into a genre like that frontier movie. Like, uh, was it one that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio just did? Uh, Can you hit pause for a second? Sorry, gotta run to the restroom. <laughs> I thought there was a pause. Record. End stream. I guess there's not a pause. I could do it bring, bring right back, but I'll just let him go and come back. And <clears throat> uh, uh, uh. there's a Jeremiah Johnson. I love that movie. Um, the Revenant. That's what it's called, The Revenant. That was really good. That was had a lot of Jeremiah Johnson in it. Uh, kind of a remaking of that, to a little, to a lesser extent. Um, that was that was good. Uh, I don't know, survival. You know, yeah. the, the Jeremiah problem is, Johnson. That was the one with uh, with. With uh, Redford. Redford. And yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, and and The Revenant was the one I was thinking of. That's the one that I, DiCaprio just did. That was pretty good. That's pretty much. I'd have to put that as if you know if we're creating a new category of frontiers movies, I'd put that one on top. Yeah. Um, but it would be followed closely by um, Redford's movie. And there was a movie. It's probably and, and see there's that crosses over between Western and Frontier, but there's one with Charles Bronson he did where he's trying to find this white buffalo. Right. Well, I mean... Uh, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but... The question is, is would you throw this into the same category? Because it was a Frontier's time period. Um, they were using flintlocks. Um, uh, the Patriot. Mo Gibson's. Gosh, see, would now you, that... Would you throw that into the same mix? I wouldn't say that's frontier, because to me frontier is hunting, trapping. Right. Because he was and in, he was in more of a in skins, you know. He was more in a suburb. Right. I would call that historical. Yeah. I call that a historical flick. Um, yeah. And that's probably one of my favorite. Uh, gosh, there's so many good ones. I. The problem is there's too many good movies. I don't know how you break them down, you know, because you'd almost have to go. Historical well, that's, army, historical club. I mean, that's kind of why I do break things down. You know, is it Patriot or is it Braveheart? Is it right. Rob Roy? Is right. it uh, Troy? Uh, what's it? Yeah, Troy. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What about um, <laughs> Kingdom of Heaven? Visually stunning movie. It might not be the greatest story story but visually just mm -hmm. stunning um the here's here's the lion in the winter that's a great movie well it's also you know as far as historically accurate films um um trying to remember what's that movie's called but jet lee did that one movie where he was uh fearless fearless was it fearless yeah fearless where he was the, the great uh yeah the martial artist the martial artist that fought the people that fought from, everybody yeah that's fearless that was a great movie fist of legends mm -hmm. that's not a historical one but, but uh i mean but yes that's why i create all these different categories because like um yet the you know, favorite science fiction. Here's a great little science fiction film. There's probably a lot of space pirates. Who's in it? Uh, Robert Gert. Robert Gert. Oh wow. Um, I don't think I've seen it. Timothy Hines. Never seen. I it. think it's Timothy Hines, isn't it? Hines, Hines. I know it's something Hines. Uh, you ever seen Space Pirates? 
No. Ah, that's a great movie. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's a good campy. Like one of my favorite uh, um, genres is uh, there's these uh, movies that I call them the Your Fucked films, and what it is is the story will start out where the main character is just fucked. I mean, his character is doomed, and the whole well, the whole story is him trying to get unfucked. Um, one of my favorites in that genre is there's a, a Tom Cruise movie called The Firm mm -hmm. where he becomes a lawyer but he doesn't realize that he's become a lawyer for the mob Yurk. and um, that's a great movie he spends the entire movie trying to get out of there Ice Pirates The Ice Pirates Never heard of it. Uh, but that's good Gregory Hines there's another movie that's... Uh, I'm pretty sure. Nope. It's Michael D. Roberts. There's another... Uh, My bad. John Matuzak, Ron Perlman. Huh. Uh, Ron Perlman's cool. It's a great... It, it, it's a fun, fun, campy little movie. Um, There's another um, movie that had... Uh, what the hell's his name? Randy... Not Randy. Oh, Quaid. what was De it? Dennis Quaid in it. Dennis Quaid? He's the younger one, right? Randy's the one that played the... Randy's the big, goofy one. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah. He's the one from... So uh, Dennis Quaid uh, was in this, and it, it, it was... I think it's called Enemy Mine. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, where, he, where he goes into the... He takes care of that uh, kid. Oh, Enemy Mine. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Where, um, With Louis Gossett Jr. Louis Gossett Jr. playing an, an alien, and uh -huh. um, the males on oh, the planet give gosh. birth, and he gives birth, and uh -huh. he dies during childbirth, and he has to... Seuss. Yeah, he has to raise yeah. that kid. That was a good movie. Draco. <laughs> Draco. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a great movie. You know, and and, and then another one of his that was uh, underrated. Um, so yeah, I started thinking about that one and forgot about this one. <laughs> I do that. Right. I thought you were talking about... Uh, the science fiction. I thought Enemy Mine. mine. Isn't that one, Enemy Mind. Not the one we go. Oh, Dream, Dreamscape. Dreamscape. That was a great movie. Dreamscape, right? Great movie. <laughs> I like the bad guy in that. Oh yeah. Right. Who was I just gonna look? Oh, Robert. Burt. Burt. No, uh, Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds has quite a few movies that I love. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a there's a thing we could, you know, it's like. Take an actor in his top five, or, you know, yeah. whatever. But, uh, I mean, he has got. Well, you can do that with directors too. Directors, yeah. It, Anybody that has enough Abrams, movies. I love that movie, Super Eight. Super Eight's all right. It starts yeah. off, you know, he has a problem with finishing. He starts good, but he really does have a problem with finishing. He likes to pull out and spray everywhere. Anyway. <laughs> But yeah, um, I mean, yeah. You know, War Horse was really no, that was Spielberg. But um, Abrams, I thought Abrams did a fantastic job on the Star Trek remakes. Decent, decent. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, it's so hard to recast. Because uh, I, the way that he did uh, for my child, Khan, yeah. I think no, Khan great. was great. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there, there's, you grew up, there's few figures in my childhood, you know, like, like, when Leonard Nimoy passed, that, that one was tough. Uh, Spock might be my all-time favorite character ever. Uh, I always liked the secondary character, Han Solo, Spock, uh, you know, I, I, I always liked even like with Gatchman, I like Jason, the blue one. I, don't know, I always like, for some reason, the, the secondary characters. I was thinking of Heat with Burt Reynolds. Right, and Clint Eastwood. No, no, that's City Heat, but oh. Heat is a movie where he plays a private detective in uh, Vegas. Yeah. And that one's so good. Yeah. Um, um, God, there's... You know, like you said, Burt Reynolds has, you know, 
quite a few things. But you know, nowadays nobody even knows. When you say the, the name Burt Reynolds, it's not on anybody's lips anymore. There's a movie, if you want to have fun, go find this movie called The End. Yes. So he gets, it starts out real slow though. He gets this diagnosis that he's gonna die Got of cancer. It. And he doesn't want to die that way, but he can't just kill himself. So what he does is he hires some guy to kill him. A crazy person. A crazy person. Named Dom Delaware. Yeah, named Dom Delaware. <laughs> Luckily he hired an incompetent idiot to do it. And then cause then he gets to notice that he's not gonna die. And so now he's gotta to try to convince Don DeLuise not to kill him, who you know, won't take no for an answer, and oh um, my, my that mom and movie dad, is so funny. My mom and dad went to see that in the theaters when it first came out, and they were minutes away from walking out of that movie. Really? Because it takes halfway through the movie, maybe even three quarters of the way through the movie, before Don DeLuise even shows up. Mm. Because the first part of the movie yeah. is just you feeling sorry for this guy. Kind of sorry, but you don't feel sorry because he's kind of an ass. Right. You know, he's just enough of an ass. He's cheating on everybody. You know, he's the consummate lady man. Mm-hmm. You know, he drives. They, they did a really good job, you know, because I'm sure back in the 70s, you know, they had him driving around in a Jaguar, mm-hmm. you know, an a E-Type. And so I'm sure everybody hated that, right? You know, driving a foreign car. And but so, yeah, he, um, but uh, like I said, mom and dad almost walked out of that movie, and then Tom DeLuise shows up in the movie after he, you know, gets, he basically puts himself into a loony bin, and he meets this character played by Tom DeLuise in there, and tells him that his great desire is to kill himself, but he can't do it he doesn't right. physically have the ability and uh so Don Deluis volunteers to help him <laughs> uh, is it, and it is it, it's a, you know and then I keep on seeing I keep getting tricked with uh on you flipping through the channels and you see oh the longest yard oh uh, damn Sam <laughs> you know it's like I prefer the Reynolds one, even though the Sandler one's packed with all the people that I know today. Right. But I don't know the the Reynolds one is just hilarious. Yeah. Has jaws in it. I like it a little bit. Has jaws in it. (laughs) Sometimes I I don't even know that actor's name. Uh uh. He's always going to be Jaws. I watched this great documentary. It was uh, a that. that guy in that movie, I think it's the name of it. It's, and what it is is, you know, you these you see these guys in so many movies, TV shows, but nobody knows their names. Right. But they're in everything, and yeah. it was a great flick. Because um, Jaws, that actor or whatever his name is, he was in Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. He's the one that got the nail stuck in his head. Uh huh. And he threatens Shooter McGavin. You can count on me being you in the parking lot. <laughs> uh, well, oh, you know, we were just, you know, bouncing around all these movies and the ones that came to mind. Johnny Dangerously. Good movie. Joe Piscopo. Joe Piscopo. I remember his name. I don't remember anybody else's name. That's funny. You ever seen Oscar? Is that uh, Dudley Moore? No, that's uh, Stallone. Oscar. Oscar, where he's uh, trying to go straight. He's a mob boss, and he's going to go straight. He's uh, investing in a bank. <laughs> and it's about him trying to go straight. And, oh, it's, it, it's, a okay, great, him, it's a great movie. Never heard of it. And uh, Chaz Palminteri is like his right hand. You want that I should whack him, boss? No! Put it away. We're not killing anybody today. Nobody dies today. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, nobody dies today. <laughs> and then he's got some guy trying to shake him down for money. His daughter is trying to 
rebel again. It, uh, it's just this concophony of stuff that's happening. It's, 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 it's really good. It's uh, right around the same time that they did Clue, I think. And it reminded me a lot of Clue. Once again, another good movie, right? Clue. Clue was good. But you know what? Oh, Willow? Another, Willow? 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 Here's another category that um, is its own category, once again, because um, it doesn't fall in any other comedies. But it's a comedy. But I put them in their own genre because they're Mel Brooks movies. Oh. Every Mel Brooks movie is a genius in its own right. Um, I don't think there's ever been a Mel Brooks movie that I dislike. Even the, there's that one called uh, Life Stinks. It was kind of done later. Um, that would probably be the lowest on my list, but still liked it. Is that hitting you at all? Yeah. Uh, I turned a fan on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, what's the, be- what, 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 what's the better Mel Brooks movie? What's the best? The Blazing Saddles. It would be a tie, in my opinion, of Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein. Both of those movies, man. Young Frankenstein's probably better. But you, you know, well, let's say, let's you know, say this: Young Frankenstein had better actors. To be or actors. not to be is pretty damn good too. Young Frankenstein had better actors. Yes. But Blazing Saddles was such a great story, and it was co-written by Richard Pryor. Pryor. It's really tough. <laughs> It's tough to choose out of those two because, yeah, I mean, because I also like uh, uh, History of the World Part 1. <laughs> like I said, I'd probably, he deserves I'd, his I'd own probably, opinion. I'd probably, if I was going to sit down to watch the movies, and it would go in the order of which one I was going to make sure I'd stay awake of, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, when me and the wife rent a bunch of movies a lot of times is we put the one that we don't like save the best for last we might if we're worried about staying up mm-hmm. that way we'll know we'll have to stay up for it a lot of times you put the one that you just don't care about it man. right you know um oh, you can fall asleep. right so if i were to be watching it like that it'd probably go young frankenstein blazing saddles history of the world then history of the world then life stinks. <laughs> <sighs> life stinks is pretty good. Yeah. yeah, then probably to be or not to be. That one's down the down the road quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Spaceballs. Spaceballs has to go up higher than that though. I think All it's right. probably it's probably Robin Hood Ben Tights. <sighs> <laughs> Unlike other Robin Hoods. Robin. I can speak with an English accent. Proper English accent. <laughs> Proper English accent. Yeah. He's good. He's smooth. I love that they chose him to be the king. He was great. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lewis? Yeah. It's like, funny. Really funny. Well, you had to pick somebody. I mean, Alan Rickman in Robin Hood. Yes. Gosh, if it hadn't been for him in that movie, that movie would have sucked. sucked so bad. Yes. Although, the scene of Morgan Freeman kicking down that door and just throwing that axe. <laughs> dude, that guy was pretty badass. Yeah. But, uh, gosh. Alan Rick, there's you, 7 o'clock, you, 9 o'clock, and bring a friend. Oh, gosh, that just. <laughs> well, the thing is, um,. <laughs> I can't think of any Alan Rickman movie that he's ever played in that he didn't steal the show in some way. Because Quigley Down Under is one of my favorite. I don't know if I would put it in a Western category. But oh, it's definitely gosh. One of my, it's definitely one of my favorite. It has to movies. be a Western. Right. It's a Western. Even though it's an Alan Rickman. See, once again, there's another one I... I... Yeah. That must... But that... I had a great musical soundtrack. It had a great story. Etc. Great actor, and then of course they added in Alan Rickman as the bad guy, which made it so over the top, fantastic. That yes, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. 
and I, it's yeah. one of those movies that I have at home that I can I can I can put on, and I'm still entertained because when he goes in there and he's having dinner with him and he explains the problem with the Aborigines being able to stay out of rifle range, and he's like, and then that brings us to you, and then the next scene is. And you see him fly out the window. <laughs> and he's like, stop! Nobody throws me out of my own house. He marches back in there. Whack, whack, whack. And he falls back out. And he's like, don't just stand there. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> but I mean, Rickman, I can't think of it. I mean, because uh, most people will say that Die Hard wouldn't have been as good if it wasn't Rickman playing the bad guy. Probably not. I agree. Probably not. I mean, there are so many movies that you can see win or lose the game in the casting. Right. You know, it's... Because, um, Snape, there was Snape. nobody else that could have played Snape in Harry Potter. That we know of. But it was, it, he was, he was great. He really was. He, mm -hmm. he, I don't know if, you know, if casting, if I would have thought of him as the ultimate emo right off the bat mm -hmm. but he was he turned out to be brilliant at it uh, you know as great as Snape was in Die Hard Jeremy Irons in the third Die Hard yeah yeah I mean his brother right but I mean it's just like that was pretty it was pretty 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 good yeah. I love pretty it when he's like good. we have to thank the good 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 gullibility of the you know New York Police Department right but yeah Yes, uh, but I don't think there's any movie that Rickman's ever done that I don't like. I'm trying to think of, because there's one of my favorite movies with Alan Rickman that most people on here won't know. Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe some of them. I got know. another one for you that most people probably won't know. Bottle Shock. Bottle Shock. That's what I was just missing. Bottle Shock. Great movie. Great I don't know movie. if he stole the movie, but very good movie he's in. Very good. I think Chris Pine. Yeah, Chris Pine probably stole the movie. Has a great performance in that that you right. don't, you didn't think was going to be there. Bottle Shock, um, awesome movie. You can't true see. Story. True story. Yeah, it's a true, true story. story. You can see how, how he, how Bottle Shock. You're like, really? I didn't know he could act that well. Then when Hell and High Water happened, you're like, mm. holy crap, that was a great flick. Well, yeah, but you you saw Horrible Bosses too, right? <laughs> Chris Pine stole the show in that the entire way through. Uh, he was no. hilarious. You know who stole the show in those movies was Jennifer Aniston. Aniston, yes. Oh, God. Aniston, yes. Oh, but, my. yeah. I mean, oh. I, put, I put both horrible bosses up on the top of the list in comedies. On the first one, I must admit, though, with uh, Colin, Colin Farrell. That, yes. Oh, my gosh. I love that. it when they're like, Oh. Like he's looking at him through the binoculars, and he's like, how does he have so much energy? And he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing I love about Justin Bateman. Oh, that's another thing on uh, Netflix. Is, um, have you watched Ozark? No, I haven't. Oh, my God. Watch it. Very important. I've, you know, I've, I'm... It's not a comedy. I know it's not a comedy. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of... I'm murder shows, like... A murder showed out. This isn't a murder show. I I know. A murder showed out. I'm got to stay one step ahead of the cops out. I'm well. I'm I'm bad people being able to miraculously somehow plot holy stay ahead of the cops in one shot by by one step. Well, let me ask you this. And and I'm. Did you like Breaking Bad? No. No. I have never made it past the first episode of Breaking Bad. Why? I don't like bad people just being bad for. I it wasn't. I, I don't you enjoy it. You, and I didn't think it was any good. Is, the I whole first think episode it. is them trying to explain why he's doing what he's doing. I know why he's doing. It. I think, and I think technically why he's doing it is a halfway decent premise. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I get it. I get why he's doing it. I understand it. I just didn't think it was very good. Well. Look, look it took me three times. If you don't like it took me head, three times watch to watch Earth. Battlestar Galactica before I actually enjoyed it. It took me three times watching Firefly. Well, that's because you're an idiot. Before I liked it. <laughs> Firefly you know, was amazing. Well, but he doesn't. I, 
I like Longmire. He's gonna say that's bad. I never even watched it. Or it's it. boring, right? Never watched it. Boring. <laughs> yeah. I I think it's. I've watched it. Another, another thing. That I, I think I've it. watched it four times through. Well, it's funny. There's I, a movie. I, I there's love a, that a show. TV show that I haven't watched that I need to watch because uh, Austin Green, my my friend, oh, yeah. our friend, um, he's the director of photography on the damn oh, thing. Oh really? Is Yellowstone? That oh. Coster flick. I want to watch it, but I don't want to pay for the service. Right. And it's funny because, you know, you know, I have a personal friend that's doing the camera work, and I should watch it. And I like Costner, mm-hmm. and I and I. I've heard only good things. I want to support show. him in doing the stuff, but I don't want to pay for the service. <laughs> Not another service. I'm tired right, of paying more know. services. I'm of the opinion that if it's good enough. It'll eventually make it to Netflix. So hopefully, I don't think so. I think they're, you know, uh, unless they start combining their services together as a bundle, you're never going to get it because the whole reason they created the service was that they wanted a piece of that pie. Yep. Uh, So which which service is it through? I don't even know. I think it's CBS. It's Yellowstone. No, no, it's it's. Is it one of the big? Is it Showtime? Is it HBO or Showtime or something like that? I don't know. I want to think it was like maybe the Stars. I. Yeah. I have no idea what the story is. I've heard it compa- being compared to uh, the old Dynasty. Oh really? Yeah. Paramount. Paramount. So it's probably, it's like, well, I, I guess you'd get the Star Trek on it. So is it, um, is it on Amazon Prime? Because I have that. Mm, well, it, it, it is, but it's not Prime. Right. You can sign up, you can play their shows through it, but you have to sign up for that independently. Right. So it's not Prime. That's the same thing with uh, that Picard show. I haven't watched any of those. Same thing. If you can find it on Prime, but you have to go through and sign up with CBS to get it. I watched the pilot for uh, the new Star Trek one, and I didn't enjoy it. Uh, then I had somebody ask, or you know, because I watched two episodes of it, and it was good. But um, I'm not going to pay for Disney, you know, just so I can watch that. One show. Oh, The Mandalorian? Yeah. It's good. But I'm not going to pay for that just to get one. Because everything else is just kids' shows. Right. Well, I mean, we can justify it because of the kid. Yeah. But. Well, The Mandalorian was, was, was good. It might be the only thing that's going to save Star Wars going forward. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of sad. The stuff that they're proposing is just. I don't know. Like, like I said, I sat and talked with this young man on Sunday, and his breaking down of of the new Star Wars movies and and why he liked them and and what made them deep and enjoyable for him is like stuff that just went right over my head and it's like really I didn't see that. All I saw was bad edits, uh, you know, clunky storylines. You know, and he agreed with that stuff, like that's there, but there was enough good stuff for him to enjoy it. But, you know, you know I, I just get, you know. No. Was yeah, The I Last remember. Jedi pretty? The Last Jedi was pretty. There is There are scenes in The Last Jedi that are just amazing. And... Well, going back to the prequels, you know how you were saying that um, you can't stand child actors? Yeah. And that'll take you out of something? That's the problem that I had with the first episode one because it started out okay you know it showed the two uh, Jedis doing their thing and you know they had a couple good fight scenes where they had to run away from the droid and mm-hmm. stuff and I'm like oh, okay that's good and then all of a sudden they ran into little Anakin Skywalker who couldn't act his way out of paper bag if he tried right and it's like okay I just got pulled out of the movie me too. Well, that, <laughs> yeah, 
that is. You know, Obi-Wan was the hero of the prequels, but he wasn't hero enough. Right. He needed to have been... So they, they, everybody says, we need to get away from the Skywalkers. We need to get away from the Skywalker storyline. Well, you know what? You could have still told the story of Obi of Anakin becoming Darth Vader, and it didn't have to technically be about him specifically. Right. I mean, if that story had been about how Obi Wan Kenobi was the badass of the universe, which he was, technically, I don't know, Mace probably was probably the badass. I don't think I would have went that direction. You know what I would have done? I mean, that's what I would I would have done that and just showed on the side Anakin slowly slipping and being controlled. I would have done it from a political point of view. I would have shown the rise of how the Emperor became the Emperor. Well, you could have... I would have focused completely on that and how he, uh, through, not through, you know... Manipulating, you know, uh, Darth Vader's body and finally turning him into some monstrous machine, I would have shown how he influenced him politically to shape his viewpoint to where he finally ended up. Because right. um, to me, that's more fascinating to see why people reached the conclusions that they reach. Well, that was supposedly what happened. Right. He supposedly, I mean, that little. The, the one little scene that does the turning, the right. one at the event that they're watching with them, mm-hmm. uh, that is chilling. I mean, that whole little talk that he has with them, how slyly, it, that, that, that's about the best part of it. But, right. but you know, how come, you know, just thinking about it as you were saying, popped in my head is, what if the first three had been the three musketeers? Hmm. To an extent, you know what I mean, and and you could have Qui Gon, Obi Wan, and Mace, and then Anakin as D'Artagnan type of thing, you know, mm-hmm. and you had those, and 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 you would have had the good side, and then you would have the bad religious side, which is the Sith technically mm-hmm. trying to take over. Both sides are struggling for control and. And and see, it would have been about the trio of heroes and this sidekick. And right. even though D'Artagnan is probably the main character, the, it's all it's called the Three Musketeers. It's about Athos, Porthos, and Aramis. Those are the, you know, those are the Three Musketeers. And. And then it wouldn't have been a Skywalker story. It would have been their story. And then we could have done something. I don't know. Yeah. I know that they're. Mine would have been more focused on the uh, Emperor. Well, you still could have done all that. Yeah. And But it would have been them doing, fighting the battles and having, you know. And, and, and just think, those three. Laughing, conjoling, and being those three characters would have been hilarious. Because it's right there. You got the consummate swordsman. You have the comedy relief, and then you have the the religious person. You had Qui Gon as your religious person. You had Mace as the as the swordsman, and then you had uh, Obi Wan to be your comedy relief. It was right built in. Even their character. Maybe maybe that's what he did. Maybe that's what he was thinking and just didn't come across right. I don't know. I don't know. I wanted to see Anakin really... Well, I, I thought it would have been definitely interesting. Would, I, definitely, I wouldn't have cut out some of the things that they cut out. Yeah. Because when he um, goes and he kills all those kids, mm-hmm. I would have left that shit in. I like the idea that somebody had a idea that uh, one of those kids, that last one, Master Anakin. Master Annie, what's happening, you know, that when he thought he finished that kid off, but that kid survived, and that was Snoke in the new movies, that that, that would have been great, because then he would have had a reason to destroy the Skywalkers, 
to not just destroy him, but to play with him and destroy him. There would there would there would have been tangible reason for revenge. And that's what that's what my that's what Brewer was saying. It's like, holy crap! You're you're right. That that, that would have been that would have been that would have been a story. But no, he was nobody, and we just chopped him in half and discarded him like it was nothing. Like what? What? Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of problems with this prequels. The prequels, yeah. There's a lot. I. Like I said, they, they did stuff in it that I wanted to see. I wanted to see Anakin. I I thought the third movie would have been awesome as Training Day. <laughs> and and what they're really doing is it's Training Day, but not like bad Training Day, you know? Like Obi Wan isn't a bad guy, but Anakin's the bad guy. And what he's doing on his off time is he's hunting Jedi. And then they're going to crime scenes the next day and investigating dead Jedi. And they don't know who's killing the Jedi. And we're having these amazing, epic battles in between this investigation until Obi-Wan finally unveil, unveils the perpetrator, which is Anakin, and and then it's Mustafar. And now there's a reason for Mustafar to happen. I mean that there's he he didn't just kill younglings. He's killing associates. Of, I mean he, I mean which he did. And but you would see it personally. You know you see these attachments that that was tearing Obi Wan's life apart. You know and 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 he did it maliciously and and, and, and almost enjoyed it. I think that would have been a, 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 a fun movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause, yeah, like I said, I would it, it would have been a, easier to write it from that point of view. You know, yeah. show the step by steps of uh, what it takes to take over a kingdom. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, we could talk a long time on bad <laughs> Star Wars stuff. Right. Between the prequels and the sequels, uh, and, and not saying that everything was bad about the sequels, there, there's little glimmers of hope here and there. Of, yeah, because, I'm sorry, I mean, there's still good storytellers. Ryan Johnson's for his whole horrible movies, that is. Looper is pretty good. <laughs> but Looper also had a problem with the ending. You know, everybody struggles with the third act. Mm -hmm. And it's usually, those are usually the movies that you enjoy are the ones that had strong third acts. You know, uh, and he struggles with the third act, and Abram struggles, struggles with the third act. I mean, Lost is a perfect example of somebody building an icon and then not understanding either either he didn't understand where that was going to end or he did not build a more compelling ending in mind when he started that because holy smokes did that fall just just fell flat you know I mean Battlestar Galactica ended much better than that did so, uh, uh, and and so Abrams, like I said, Super Eight. There's some great things in Super Eight. Great little nostalgia things. I mean, that was Stranger Things before Stranger Things. Yep. Uh, so there's tons of little things that happen in it. Just for like the last movie. Ride of Skywalker. Have you seen that one? I haven't. Uh, but so Kylo Ren is starting to revert back into Ben Solo. He's starting to. I don't know if he's drifting to the light side. But he's definitely drifting gray, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they call it. And as he slowly is drifting back to the light side, and he's turning into Ben Solo again, he starts picking up mannerisms like his father. Like Han Solo, 
So there's a couple of times, like a stormtrooper comes up and gives him some information, and he points at him and tells him to go and do something. But it's just like Harrison Ford would have done. He did it earlier in the movies, and it's like he did it there, and then he does it later. He does another little mannerism, just this little, this little pickups here and there. And he starts. You can tell he's starting to revert back to. It's okay to be a solo again. Uh, so I like that bit. I thought that was kind of cool. I, I really did. Uh, Ray using two lightsabers like this. Uh, so much of that stuff just. I mean. <clears throat> You know, there's a whole generation, just wait, there's a whole generation in 20 years when somebody remakes Harry Potter and does it in such a way that makes you want to tear your face off, you know? Just, just, just wait, just well, wait. It's, it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. to me is uh, that, um, you know, for the longest time, American movies were it. They were the ones that, uh, you know, people were comparing themselves to. But um, uh, around 2000s, um, you know, depending on which genre you pick, um, America wasn't it anymore. It was like in a horror genre about, I don't know, six years ago, uh, you know, the uh, American movies weren't as scary as Japanese mm. movies. Yeah, or Korean. And then, um, yeah. yeah, or Korean. And then uh, there was some Korean um, action movies that came out that were far superior than anything that we were doing. And then we remade them here in the United States. Because Old Boy, if you, see Old the, Boy. if you see the original Korean version, mm -hmm. far superior than the one that they remade here. I can only imagine. <laughs> I didn't see the original. I didn't see the new one just because I seen the original, and so it's mm -hmm. it's such a tough subject to watch, and so it, it there wasn't one to revisit. Right. Which like, is very few. There's some movies that have been really good that I don't revisit. <laughs> Fargo. Right. Fargo is disturbing. To watch those guys and what they did to people for six thousand dollars, I think is what. Or for three thousand, I think it was for three thousand. It was some, it was some ridiculous cheap amount of money. You know, in the movies you always hear, oh, a hundred grand to kill somebody or this or that, and they're doing it for like two thousand dollars or some, some, some ridiculous amount of money, and it, it's very disturbing. It's actually, it's very disturbing to me. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad that the movies here in America have gotten back to. I mean, they were remaking everything that they could get their hands on. Oh, yeah. And finally, it seems like we're getting original stories. Right. Well, you know, it's, and it's the tough is writing original stories that... Like I said, there, there's movies out there that are good, but you've seen that movie so many times. Right. Not that it was a bad movie. It's just you've seen it. Like I was saying, that Ben Affleck movie, a camera is something 14 or something. Uh, it was on Netflix. Um, uh, I, I'm looking for, I, I, I hope he does the Batman stuff for the TV show, for the HBO Max. And I hope they do his Batman movie that he was going to do, because... Hmm. Uh, his Batman in the first uh, Batman v Superman was really good. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was Justice League. Yeah, Justice League, no, but. The thing is, is Batman is just one of those characters, in my opinion, that's better as a standalone character and keep him away from the other guys, you know? Because uh, when you put them in a room with all of these heroes that actually have superpowers, I swore that was him. he's just not as compelling. Why is it? Why is it on here? I think you're going nuts. I think P 
Pedro Pascal is in it. Triple Frontier. Yeah, Ben Affleck. How is that not in his Wikipedia? <laughs> or in his uh, IMDb page? Well, it's called Triple Frontier. It's just about five guys going and stealing money from a drug de drug lord in South America. I actually saw that. Yeah. A good little flick, right? Mm -hmm. But... We've seen the movie 50 times. You know, it's like, right. I'm not saying it was a bad movie. It's just, it's hard to write some original stuff. And so, I, I heard one guy talk about the idea that, you know, everybody complains about Hollywood doing remakes, you know. And, and he's like, you don't think they want to make the next big blockbuster original movie? Well, they do. But that starts at the writing level. Right. He's all so what we have a problem right now is writing. Yes. We don't have, um, we want to just make crappy movies. We have, we don't have great writers. We don't have innovative writers who want well, to write. One of the things that I think they need to do, is, and, they, and they've done this, is, uh, you know, they go and they find authors who've made these great books and, you know, they try to get them to write screenplays, you know, and, um, you know, I, a lot of times the screenplay just doesn't translate that book good enough. No, you almost have to get a great screenplay writer, match it up with the book writer, mm -hmm. and then collaborate. Collaborate, yeah. try to work through it. Um, yeah, there's there's still a couple books I would love that I read back in the day that I'd love to to try to make into a movie. I think they could be made into it's a great movie, but yeah, we definitely have a a, a writing problem with our movies today and that's the reason why they're so locked into making remakes because it's already pre-built into it right. the only problem is they just make remakes with the wrong people mm -hmm. nobody's willing to cast aggressively nobody's willing to right. face off was a perfect example of casting against two types I think and, and, and then the movie was brilliant because of it. Putting those two against each other was brilliant. Who, you know, you can only imagine who that would be now. I and it, and it would never, it wouldn't work as well. I would love to see, because that was actually made um, by John Wu in <clears throat> China. That, that story was made before. And we just remade it here in America with American actors. But uh, I'd kind of like to see that original take you know, see how, because um, in the original, you know, we got two Asian guys that look quite a bit alike. Oh, do they? Yeah. So it's not as big of a... Right, there's no big difference, you know. Uh, well, and, and they picked two people with vastly different personalities, yeah. too. And what was fun is they, uh, with vastly different personalities, and, they, and Wu, I guess it was his idea, just let them do whatever they wanted to do. Like, okay, here's your chance to develop this character now. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, was... You are an international terrorist. <coughs> Go. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he came up with a great international terrorist. Yeah. Ooh, wee, you good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's like looking into a mirror, only not. <laughs> oh man, that's that's a good movie. <laughs> well, we've rabbled on for three hours. Yep, I think we're wrap up time. Maybe next time, what we'll have to do is we'll have to do something like this again, but maybe genre specific. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna tangent anyways. Yeah, no, no kidding. Uh, like <laughs> one of the movies on my list I didn't even get to that 
Into the Spider Verse. Good choice. Gosh, might be the greatest superhero movie ever made. I mean, yeah. You know, most people who, a lot of people today, watch superhero movies just watch them. You know, they get all the information from the superhero movie. But growing up reading comic books, man, that might be the first time they ever watched a comic book come to life. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, truly come to life on the screen. It was, I want to see those two be given an animated cartoon like that of the X Men. Because mm -hmm. that's my passion, is the X Men. And. Yeah. That could be awesome. I think um, one of my favorite anime animated uh, uh, comic book stories from Marvel is um, Hulk versus Wolverine. Hulk versus Wolverine. Yeah, that was really good. He rips me out. First Light. If you want to watch it, you want to watch a really good movie. It's First Light, which is Green Lantern. It's pretty much Training Day with Green Lantern. It's what the movie should have been. It should have been Green Lantern. Should have been Training Day with Mark Strong and Nathan Fillion, and that movie would have been ten times better. Yep. What it could have shit is. Poor Ryan Reynolds. What it could have shit is. Yeah, and we didn't even talk Deadpool. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe we just need to take a movie and deconstruct something. <laughs> Or just, you know, just talk about Ugh. specifically. Oh, well, yeah. I know. What I know. What, what is the next podcast about? I don't know. I mean, um, uh, we still have uh, more story I can read. We can do whatever. Uh, we only made it to chapter two, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, well... You know what might be interesting is, well, I know that so much of it is built upon movies. And what? Shattered Time, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of like uh, I've explained it. If it's kind of like um, the, my writing style. Um, mm -hmm. If I had to uh, compare it to somebody, um, you know, people often ask Tarantino, "Do you go to school?" For writing and all this kind of stuff and his answer is no I went and watched the movies and so um, I kind of fall into that same category I like stories because I've read and watched a lot of stories and so I mean this all happened because I was role-playing <laughs> <laughs> Playing role playing games. They're evil. <laughs> they are. <laughs> well, we'll figure out something. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll do some drawing again next time. Yeah. And. Because, can they see that uh, logo right there? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, they can't see your face though. Are they, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm off the screen right now. No, I'm uh, just wondering. Uh, hopefully, this should be what. What what they see when they're watching it is the ac actual picture. That yeah, that uh, that um, on the screen there is uh, uh, what we're trying to use for our um, studio or whatever you want to call it. Our, um, our logo. Our logo. Cause, yeah. Uh, we have um, well, we made a T-shirt out of it. <laughs> Over here are some thumbnails for page but breakdowns for Shattered funny, Time. Because uh, that was the name that we were originally going to use was About Time. And uh, we just changed it to Burnt Out. Burnt Out! Because we're burnt out. But yeah, the, uh, we're hopefully going to have an animated logo. Yeah, sometime. I would like to try to animate, but I'm not very good at animation. Right. But... You know, we get this going, and we start getting some subscribers and a little bit of cash, and we'll uh, definitely uh, go on Fiverr. And, right. and not only that, but I know a lot of animators here in the area that might be able to uh, that would do it for the well, same money. The one thing that I know is um, that uh, as far as 
and helping us focus and stuff, this uh, podcast has kind of helped. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. Uh, yeah. Because even if nobody's listening, at least we're talking. We're talking about <laughs> it, yeah. Well, just getting together helps too. Right. You know, just forcing us to to interact and that helps. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for hanging out. That is three hours on the dot almost. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend.